Good morning, everybody. How is everyone? There's a few of you here already. I am a little bit early as ever. <laughs> so I put my um, Savannah 7537 on today and uh, it's chilly down here. Um, the uh, temperature is turned around and that's just an email to say that I've gone live, which is nice to know that I'm live. Yeah, it's currently 16 degrees in here. I'm gonna turn my thermometer around so I can see it from both sides of the room. I did try putting a jumper over the sleeves of this dress and that's one of the downsides of these sleeves is that you can't fit a jumper over them easily. Um, never mind, never mind. Uh, so Evie's here, she says, I finally made it on time. Yay, good morning from Southern US, good morning. And Trisha says, good morning, peeps from a very sunny Liverpool, good morning. Elena says, good afternoon, lovely Sean and peeps. Good afternoon, Elena. Caroline's here, good morning. Uh, she says morning peeps good morning caroline so how is everybody how are you all doing so i've had another low sojo week i think you guys have realized that though because i've put two vlogs out i've made two things this week the bag and the dress so i'm thinking today i would like to try and work on my Cobra Corsage Mulberry Brouillet shirt because we are in the fourth month of the year and I have made one of my Make Nine projects. I've got two more cut out, but I need to keep the paste up because I really want to complete it this year. And in fact, I'm hoping to get more, <laughs> more done as well, not just the uh, nine that I picked. So to do that, I'm going to actually need to do some sewing. So I was thinking we could hang out whilst I attempt the Brouillet shirt. I have everything cut out for it except for the interfacing so I will need to do that at some point. I'm trying to make it so that the wire doesn't hang in the way the whole time. Is that better? Slightly better. So what have I done? Have I even marked in my darts? I think I did but let's just check. Yes, I did mark in the points of the darts, so I just need to join those up, get the darts sewn. What's the first thing that they want me to do? Oh, the first thing they want me to do is the back yoke piece. Oh, and then sew the bust and waist darts. Do I need interfacing for that? I have made this before. It's kind of coming screaming back to me. I think it's a fairly simple one to, um... <laughs> it says if you want to go further for an impeccable result, French seam the waistband, the size of the shirt and the sleeve seams. Very nice. I think I've actually cut out two of the waistband because I wanted to enclose the inside rather than French seam things. But French seaming is also a very good option. So that's what I would like to do today, but I will probably procrastinate and end up chatting to you and fiddling with fabric, which Oh, oh, the um, I think I told you last week about the cloth edit, the fabric the cloth edit sent me. It's arrived. I have filmed the my my talking about it for Tuesday's waffle, but I have it down here. I brought it with me just in case you guys wanted to see it. You yeah. know, not that I want to force you to have a look at fabric, but just just in case. <laughs> um, Natalie's here. Hi, I'm not late either. Lol. 7am in Toronto. Yawn. Wow, that is early. Welcome. Good morning. Sue says, good evening from a pleasant Sydney evening. Good evening. Trusting UK is here. Hello. Welcome. Claire C says, good morning, Sean and Pete's from sunny Cheshire. Good morning. Maran is here from Israel. Um, I love your hair. Oh, thank you. It's um, literally air dried and fluffy. Very, very fluffy. And if I don't do anything to it, I always end up with this Disney princess quiff at the front. Like, 
it's this is I've done nothing to it let it do its own thing and it's just yeah yeah I do think I actually have curly hair um I need to get myself some from all the stuff that I've been reading about the curly girl method I need to get myself some gel to put in when it's wet and form the ringlets and then just leave it the trouble is I am a hair toucher I like playing with my hair I can't leave it alone I twiddle it I play with it I run my fingers through it it's a safety blanket kind of thing it's it's reassuring I've always been a hair toucher and I don't think that's a good thing for curls <laughs> so yeah but I do fancy giving giving some gel a try in wet hair and seeing what the curls come out like because when I let it air dry yesterday I have brushed this through a couple of times but I, I did end up with just ringlets um so yeah I'd be interested to see but they were fluffy because there was nothing no product on them so it'd be interesting to see what they what they turned out like with um actually products that are supposed to be or designed for that kind of thing um Trisha says, apologies if any spelling mistakes sat on my reading glasses. So trying to use my distance to read and write with sight. Oh, good luck and no worries at all. Uh, Lala Palooza says here. Good morning from Canada. Good morning. Elena here, uh, says, I'm also trying to get Sojo back. We'll be testing a self-drafted bag pattern later today. Ooh, fun. I have my second Annette all cut out. I might regret this in a second. That's everything that goes into making a handbag. Don't break. Don't break. Um, I can't start working on it, though, until mum is ready to come down and sew along with me because she would like to make the bag for herself. And she also wants to at least kind of like have one bag made before the retreat so that she can help anybody out if they need it. And also I'm supposed to be teaching this bag. So it would be quite good if like mum, if I was trying to teach mum and mum's like, that bit doesn't make sense. You might want to rephrase that or something like that. So yeah. Uh, Moran says, embrace the fluff. I mean, I have no choice but to embrace the fluff. It is very fluffy. It's actually getting quite long. And I think, because when it got this long before, it all it just really just thinned out at the ends. And I that's when I had it all kind of chopped back up to here. And I do like that style when it's like this with the, the fringe. But it is my mum's hairstyle. And I like wearing my hair up. I haven't put it up today because I thought I would try it down. Um... So yeah, the longer it gets, the more I can do with it. But I also don't want it to look really scraggly. So I've just just got the floof today. Lots of floof. Um, Megan's here. Good morning, Sean Pete's from New Orleans. Good morning. Sue says the cloth edit sent me samples with my pattern order, and now I have um, material on its way. Beautiful fabric. Gabrielle's not silly. She sent me samples as well. Look, look at that one. There's one that's just launched today, which is very Dolce & Gabbana. It's kind of like the, the the patchwork type fabric. And I am I was seriously tempted. And Gabrielle, bless her, was messaged me and she's like, I knew you'd like it. It's like, stop it. <laughs> um, but I already have a cotton lawn, a Dolce & Gabbana cotton lawn. And as much as I would love two of them, and I might be talking myself into it here, I think I want this one more. This one is just so, so beautiful. And I don't know how I overlooked it when I was picking out my fabrics. I'll show you the one that I got. Um, but yeah, she sent me a whole bunch of samples of the linen silk. It's 5% silk and 95% linen. And it's beautiful. It's really, really nice. Um, these are all the pans that they have. This one as well. <laughs> and oh, just so 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 beautiful this one this one <laughs> um katri says good morning mim 73 says wishing you all a nice sunday thank you mim uh Sal says good day peeps and sean uh good day sal well good evening 
And Natalie says, I have similar hair, but the curly girl method is so involved. I just didn't have the dedication necessary. That's my other issue is I am not that patient with my hair and actually blow drying it. I don't not blow dry it for the lack of heat on it. I don't blow dry it for the lack of effort I want to put into my hair, which is really bad. But when I wear it up most of the time with that hairpiece as well, I love that hairpiece. Um, I do prefer wearing it up. I just do. Um, I used to wear my hair down all the time when I had extensions in uh, because it was thicker and I, I, I like the look of thick hair down. But like I say, mine without all the fluff in it is really fine. There's a lot of it, but it's very fine. So the fluff makes it look thicker. But when I straighten it and make it look decent, it then goes really fine and just a bit like, it's a bit boring. So I used to wear my hair down all the time when I had extensions in and I would love to have extensions back, but they're really expensive, really expensive. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna wear it up. But yeah, I the curly girl method, I love the idea of it. I wanna try it because I wanna see how curly my hair actually is with the proper things done to it, um, just because I'm interested. <laughs> but I don't, definitely don't have the patience for it, really. Uh, Michelle says, good morning, peeps. It's a rainy Sunday in Bermuda. Lovely day for hanging with my sewing mates. How are you all? Oh, hello. We've actually got some beautiful sunshine today, which is lovely. So, yeah. Uh, MF says the 7537 is so pretty by the way thank you very much it is definitely one of my favorites I'm really glad that I made this fabric into this long sleeved dress this is going to see me through till the very height of summer I do have quite a lot of the savannah viscose left I think I've got eight, eight meters back there and I'm thinking about making the nine seven no the seven nine four five from McCall's which is the uh, the one that I've made a red dress out of. Um, it's got no shaping, but it does have ties in it. And it's a maxi dress. I'm thinking about making one of those and then also an Eve dress. Because as I say, I've got eight meters and I should be able to do both of those things from my last eight meters. Although I was thinking about a blouse as well. So maybe not. But I do want like a proper high summer dress in this fabric. But I'm really glad that I made this dress with it as well. Lala Pluza says, I think I stole your sojo, have made three slip dresses to go for casual dress with t-shirt style for summer for a change from shorts. Oh, wow. Amazing. Amazing. Artie Blade 4 says, hello. Uh, greetings from Nashville. Hello. Welcome. Marissa says, hi, everyone from Brisbane. Good evening. Natalie says, Lala, what pattern did you use for the slip dress? Mm. Yeah, good. Good point, actually. I still need to trace out my Sicily slip dress and make that. Um, Jojo's here. Hi, Jojo. Welcome. Bree says, hello, everyone. Love the floof and the dress. Thank you. <laughs> Lots of floof. Lots of floof. Jenna Pin says, morning. I've been doing actual sewing this morning for a change. Almost finished a Roscoe shorter dress. Just some hand sewing for the neck band and sleeve bands. Do you carry on sewing or do housework? Do I carry on sewing or do housework? I mean, sewing, obviously. <laughs> That's a very silly question. <laughs> Lala Palooza says the Vogue 9278 and one self drafted. Very nice. Bree says new video, the curly hair escapades. Yes. I might actually try and try the curly girl method for like a week and film my um, process of it because we've got proper Hagrid hair going on at the moment. Well, I mean, my sister in law, Nia, bless her, she's pro got proper Hagrid hair. Um, mine is trying to compete, but only about halfway there. Uh, la, 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 la. Where did I get to? Plowing patterns. Hello from Stockholm. Glad I finally able to join you live. Usually I just watch the hangouts afterwards. Hello, welcome. How are you? Uh, Natalie says to Megan, I haven't, but I'll make a note and look for it. Thanks. Uh, oh, um, Megan says to me and Natalie, have you tried Be Curly from Aveda? It feels it's feels like a leave-in conditioner, but it makes my curls shine and stay formed. Ooh, I haven't tried that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll have to have a look into that. 
Evie says, I have fine hair too. Two thirds of it fell out since I got a bad case of bronchitis in the fall. So I lost and lost 15 pounds in less than a week. So I'm now rocking a pixie cut and trying to grow it out. Fun times. Yeah. Have you guys seen me with my pixie crop? I um, I thoroughly abused my hair. And ended up because uh, I had it bleached for a while. M Mum really wanted me to go blonde again. And I did go blonde for a while, um, but the maintenance and the person that did it wasn't very good, unfortunately. And so I ended up having to chop all my hair off because it was so, so badly damaged. It was just, yeah, it was a mess. So can I find a picture of my crop, my pixie crop? I could if I was looking at these properly, but I'm not, or am I? All photos, there we go. That's it grown out a little bit. Where is the actual picture of it? Very, very short. <laughs> Scrolling through my photo album yet again. Here we go. It's me all chopped off. I mean, technically, it's probably a little bit longer on top. I think it was maybe two inches long all over and then short at the back. But, yeah, that was weird. That was weird. And it was surprisingly high maintenance as well, having it all chopped off. Like, because you had to do it every day. You couldn't just scrape it back. So, yeah. My um, old hairdresser kept saying to me, it was like, if you want any of the crazy colours, you're just going to have to go short. Because, like, you can have them, but your hair just doesn't like bleach. And it's like, mm. actually, I used to be blonde. Um, I used to have blonde hair. Let's see if I can find photos of that. Like, I used to have beautiful blonde hair. Um, no, all the ones on here are me as a redhead. I have to go into Facebook, going far back into my history. Uh, photos. I don't want to add a photo. I want to look at photos. There we go. Albums. Um, profile pictures. So it wasn't like bright blonde hair. It was kind of like a honey blonde. So, gosh, you can see how much weight I've put on, can't you, as well, around my face. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That was highlights and bleach, so my hair will do it. Oh, I want to be that skinny again. <laughs> I want to be that skinny again. Um, yeah, so my hair will go blonde. Totally go blonde. But my hairdresser was because I came to them with such damaged hair they were just like oh yeah your hair just doesn't like blonde and it's like no probably it was because I used my mum's hairdresser and Saudi who was a lady who came to your house and she used packet dye so it probably wasn't the best stuff so yeah yeah uh, Michelle says I'm with you the curly girl method is far too much commitment for me and rules I have curls too with humidity I have frizz because mine is fine and a lot of hair a good curl cream and air dry yeah that's what I'm thinking I want to try one of those like gels that go in your hair when it's wet and you can let it air dry and just get rid of the floof because that's been my big thing my entire life every time I've gone to hairdressers I've just been like look this is what it does naturally it's not dry like my hair is not like um, damaged dry I know curlier hair is more porous and drier in general but it's not dry it's just fluffy and I don't think any hairdresser has ever been able to be like well that's because you have 2c curly hair and you're not treating it right but yeah 
Megan says to Natalie, very welcome. It changed me from mushroom head floof to curls. Hope it helps. It's a bit more than I like to pay, but works. Ah, I shall have to look into it. You'll have to email me, Megan, please, if you don't mind, because I will forget. Uh, Kim says, hi, everyone from sunny Dover in Kent. Hello, welcome. Christine says, hi, everyone. Hello. Elena says, super cute, and I love that red colour. Yeah, the red, I did like the red. Artie, Artie Blade says, your short hair is so cute. Thank you. <laughs> Sal says, that's about my hair length now. Yeah, I did, without makeup, look like my brother <laughs> quite a lot. I think that was the thing as well about short hair is I felt fine if I had makeup on, but if I didn't have any makeup on, I did feel very boyish. Um, Lala Palooza says, oh my gosh, yes, short hair has to be fussed with every day. No tossing it up in a ponytail for a lazy day. Exactly. Uh, Jenna Lee says, good morning from Ohio. I abused my hair so much. I shaved it like nine or ten years ago. Oh, wow. Evie says it's so cute on you I've got about an inch at the back and maybe six and at the front and it's so comfortable but does need to be done every day looks quite silly first thing in the morning yes <laughs> I remember waking up and just being like what is going on <laughs> Natalie says to gin and pins so 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 host housework can wait totally Michelle says Moroccan oil curl cream and air dry no touching till dry or LUS brand curl cream at Canada is the two miracle products for me. Oh, you guys, full of all the knowledge. Jin and Pin says, okay, you talked me into it. Working on thread count PJ bottoms and new look 6298 view D, both in light sw sweatshirt fabric. Pink with silver metallic thread. Need shopping first though. Are you sewing today? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. Maybe you guys can talk my sojo back into in, into existence. It's really cold. Why is the heater not working? I mean, it is. It's warm by the heater. It's just a really large space for it to fill up. You know, it's five metres by five metres by two and a half metres. Whatever that is, the cubic air, air thing in there. So, yeah. Um, Leslie says, good morning all. Good morning. Evie says, my daughter has curly hair and I put mousse for curly hair in it after a bath to keep the curl definition. Could be an easy thing to fiddle with. I have tried mousse and none of them really work for me. Um, yeah, I have tried that. I haven't tried the gel method. So we'll have to give that a try. Um, Kathleen says, guess I was pretty fortunate growing up. My mum was a hairdresser with her shop in our house had access to all her goodies, started colouring my hair at 13. Oh, wow. I think I had a perm at 13. I think I might talk my mum into letting me have a perm. And I think we went to our hairdressers in the village that we lived in that only catered to old ladies. And so I ended up with an old lady perm. It wasn't a good look. <laughs> but I went back for a second one. Uh, I think I dy started dyeing my hair darker at the age of 15. 14, 15. And it's been various shades of kind of dark red, dark purple and dark brown majority of my life. Then I um, started going blonder because the guy that I was dating at the time really just liked blonde hair. So I started getting the highlights in, which is those photos you saw with the blonde hair. And then we, we broke up and I liked the blonde hair. So I kept it. And the only reason I stopped was because it was so expensive having it done and I stopped doing the job where I was making as much money as I used to so I couldn't afford to keep it up and looking as good as it deserved to so I dyed it dark and then it went back to being red and then I've been red and dark with that one period of blonde in between and then ended up having it all chopped off so yeah I haven't been I haven't done crazy colors I would love to do crazy colors like, if I had my way, the red I would have had would have been the pillar box red. Like, really bright red. But, yeah. Um, Rachel's here. Quick hellos. I'm waiting for my train to London. Hello. Welcome. What are you doing in London? Exciting. Kim says, my soju is hiding too, although I have managed a bit of English paper piecing this week. Nice. Bree says, I had a perm at 13. Mine was an old lady perm too. Ha ha. Yeah. Have you seen, there's like, um, there's a robot perm now. There's an actual like robot machine, which puts like, oh, I don't know. It, it, I've kind of fallen down that, the, the Brad Mondo um, YouTube poll a couple of times. I never used to watch his channel, but I've kind of ended up 
watching quite a lot of the the different things that he does it's really interesting but yeah there's this new technique like robot perm it's like oh my gosh but the thing is that one just gives waves and it kind of smooths the hair down like a keratin treatment and I'm like yeah but it, what you can't get it right close to the root because of the type of heat that's used you can't have it too close to your root and I if I'm having a perm I want spirals I want corkscrew curls like I would I, I did talk to my my hairdresser recently about having a perm and he was just like your hair won't cope with it and I was like okay so yeah yeah my um my Pinterest board on Pinterest my hair is called hair envy because I probably will never be able to have half of these things uh, hair envy and it kind of starts out fairly like you know it's all fairly kind of normal and then we get into the the colors like oh and then these ones are like when I'm trying and curls and oh, long hair does anyone follow Scarlett O'Hare on Instagram oh my god I'm so jealous of that woman because not only is her hair like past her butt long it's so thick but I mean yeah this is when I'm trying to like decide if I should have it all cut off but the majority of these pictures are all crazy colors with super super long hair I just oh, I want them I want them so much uh just once once I would love to have rainbow hair <sighs> Yeah, yeah, hair envy. Um, let me find Scarlett O'Hare on, I found her, uh, Rachel Maxey mentioned her, which is how I came across her. Oops, Scarlett O'Hare. Her real name's Molly. Yeah, here we go. I am not remotely jealous. Not remotely jealous at all. Oh my God, look at it. I want her hair. <laughs> I mean, everybody's hair has like a, a natural length that it will get to. And I kind of always thought mine was around here because the bits around my face would get this long and then just never get any longer. But they're the bits that I use the most heat on um, and do the most damage to, I'm guessing. And the um, some of this bit's now gotten super, super long. But it never kind of gets any longer than this. But that's usually because I get bored or worried about it and then have it all chopped off. And I just really want really long hair. I know it would be incredibly hard work, but I really want her hair. <laughs> Oh dear. Let's see. Um, where did I get to? Sewing in PJ says shopping today. Spotlight have simplicity and McCall's patterns three for fifteen dollars until the fourteenth of April. Not sure what I'm getting yet. I mean, it's an easy answer. All of them. Get all of them. <laughs> Um, Jenny Pin says, I cut out the two dresses I'm working on in February. So glad my sojo has come back again. Slowly reading the Couture Techniques book really got me enthusiastic for sewing again. Naturally going grey. Nice. Yeah, I need to buy mine. It's going, it's going very grey in there. Very, very grey. And I did let it grow out. I had about two inches of it and I just didn't like it. So I just dyed it back again. Uh, Elena says, try galaxy hair. It looks fabulous. Yeah. Natalie says, I'm not a robot anywhere near my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nia says, I'm here for a bit. Kids all in bed with raging hangovers. What did you do to them? <laughs> what did you do to them? How many, of you, how many of them have you got? Mim says, I'm using the Cantu Twist and Lock Gel after washing. It works for my curls. Can recommend it. You guys are going to have to we have start a thread in the peeps group because I'm, I'm going to need all of these written down for me. Marissa says, love the pixie cut and love the Brad Mondo too. <laughs> yeah. 
Megan says, haha, I saw that video. The robot perm matching machine gives a serious clockwork orange vibes. Yeah, I mean, it was just like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to let my head near that thing. Um, Sal says, I've written over 30 stories on all by one leading lady have, have been redheads. The others were the other was a blonde based on a friend. I blame Dana Scully from the X-Files for my thing for redheads, lol. Yeah. <laughs> Bree says, I always wanted Jennifer Gray, uh, Gray's curls from the 80s, Dirty Dancing, loved her floof. I have super long hair, but it's quite thin. She did have good floof. Nia says, I used that. I use that too, smells so good. Ooh, big bird, you'll have to remind me what it was. Roscoe's here, hello everyone, hi. Michelle says, uh, Cantu is a great for curls too. I use those products as well. Kathleen says, that's lady like Lady Godiva hair. I know, right? Jojo says, ha, don't co um, covet long hair enough to sit on. No pun intended, but it's a pain in the butt. So much hard work. Lol. I know yours used to be so long and you chopped it all or shaved it off, didn't you? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I um, my longest was um, just past my waist. It was hair extensions. They were hard work. But, oh, my God, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And they were blonde. I used to um, put them in um the foam rollers it's even tighter than hers went and I'd end up with hair that went from like just past my waist to kind of like at boob level um in a little spiral oh I love that hair I love oh that was so expensive you know those guys that you used to get on the street the Tony and Guy kind of like how much did you spend on your last haircut would you like to come in and have like your hair done by us for like promotional work and things like this and they were like, um, they usually expect people to be like, oh, yeah, no, 70 quid, 60 quid, something like that. And they were like, how much did you spend on your last haircut? It was like two and a half grand. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was, they were, when I say extensions are expensive, incredibly expensive for the good ones. Oh, my God, though, I love that hair. And I got, I still have it now because I've had it put back into my head so many times. And um, because they get put in with little beads of glue at the top that are like a centimeter long. And they get rolled into onto strands of your own hair and you melt the glue and and gently pull the extension off so that you then chop the bead off and then so you lose like a you know maybe a half a half a inch a centimeter off of each length of hair to then have it put back in your head so you know 26 inch hair which is what i had you know i, I it now comes to here i've had that much chopped off of it but it you know that oh god i had that done over 10 years ago I miss that hair. It was good hair. And it was so thick. Michelle says, just think what she spends on hair products. Yes. 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 It's quite interesting, actually. Again, Brad Mondo, he's like, look, even if you have like super, super long hair, the bit that you need to be washing is the bit around your scalp. You don't need to wash the lengths of it. So, you know, like two 10 cent pieces of um, shampoo, wash the top, wash the bottom. And then when you rinse it, the suds will go through the rest of the hair. But you don't actually need, I mean, unless you've got something in it, but you don't really need to be like sudsing and rinsing and washing these bits of your hair. That's what the conditioner's for. So, yeah, I've uh, like that. His video is about like you're using the wrong hairbrush and you're washing your hair the wrong way. It's like, oh, I hadn't noticed that. I'll give that a try. So, yeah. Renske says, I follow your advice on Bonina machines and got a new Bonina overlocker this week and I'm so happy with it. Oh, yay! Awesome. I love my Boninas. Like I say, I'm very biased. The only other machine that I've really ever used is a singer and I love that too. It just was too small and puny for what I needed it to do. So I, you know, I'm very spoiled. I love my Boninas. Uh, Evie says, rainbow hair is a popular way to support the LGBTQ community for Pride Day in June. Maybe summer you could take the plunge. If I can find a hairdresser that's willing to bleach my hair, the trouble is I just, I won't be able to do it in one go. It will have to be a process of having my hair lightened and lightened. Unless, because there's, I mean, I suppose the red is about here now. So unless I went in, had all this chopped off, but then this but this has got dye on it as well, like dark brown dye. So yeah, it'll be a really long process, but yeah, that would be very cool. Elena says the amount of work that hair needs is overwhelming. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I I just I know when I had my super, super long hair, I loved it. And it was extensions, like I say, so it was 
even harder than natural hair because there's a whole bunch of other things you have to do for extensions that you can't do for natural hair. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Anessa says, good morning. I have super fine hair and way, way too much of it. If it gets long, I don't get, and I don't undercut it. It gives me nasty migraines. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, my, my niece's hair, Re, she's got really fine hair, hasn't she, Big Bird? But she, hers gets really knotty if she if she's not careful with hers. I remember you having to brush it out a couple of times. Big Bird says, not guilty. They were out with their cousins. All three are here. Oh, nice. Say hello to them for me when they do finally come round and just say, oh, I don't have a hangover. <laughs> oh, God, my eyel I'm getting my eyelashes done on Thursday. It's been four weeks. Um, Mariana has been um, on a training course. So I would have liked to have gone in two weeks ago to have them topped up. And they're looking really Yzma-esque at the moment. And there's one that's just kind of like not quite doing what it's meant to. But I'm going in on Thursday, which is great. Caroline says, my hair is very thin and fine, but almost waist length. Um, Sylvia has tried the funky colours. Uh, it was dark blue the other week. Oh, cool. Did, what colour hair did she have when she was at the meetup? I wasn't, I think, um, was it purple? Am I imagining that? Um, Marie says, uh, morning from Shropshire. We'll be popping in and out due to helping with the husband repair the pagoda due to the winds on Wednesday. Oh, wow. Good luck with that. And Marie, that photo you put up of that Dolce & Gabbana dress, I love that. I have that pinned many, many times. Many times. I'm so tempted by that fabric. But she only has some um, two yards of it left, though. So I need more than two yards, especially to make a, remake a dress like that. But oh, so pretty. Uh, Evie says, I had hair to my butt till I was 20. Um, it always got stuck everywhere if it was ever down, under my arms, under my butt, in the car window, lol. Oh. I remember used to wear my, when I had my extensions in, the really long ones, I used to wear my hair up around a donut and I'd end up with this just giant bun, very much like what I have with my hairpiece that I wear, the curly looking hairpiece. It ended up looking very much like that. Uh, uh hair we always want we, we want what we haven't got don't we uh debbie says i remember having long hair extensions back in the 90s when they started to get really popular i shed more than dog <laughs> yeah i um gosh i suppose mine were the early 2000s um i actually found that because we um with mine um because there was the little beads of glue if my natural hair fell out the when you take them out they'd be in my natural hair would kind of like be folded back over the top of the extension bead and um I didn't I've always found that I didn't really lose that much of my own hair in it I do oh, yeah I still have my hair extensions up in my room but having them put back in without buying the hair is still 300 quid because it's like an eight hour process. It's really long. I had it done a couple of Christmases ago when Big Bird had her, her hair was about my length now, but hers is properly curly. So it was longer than that. And she'd had that chopped into a bob. Re had a rainbow under undercut done. It wasn't undercut. It was under under dye. Like the bottom layer of her hair was rainbow. And I had my extensions put back in. We were in there for a good six seven hours but yeah it was 300 quid which is reasonable because you know it's skilled work and it took a long time and that was with me providing the hair so I'd love to have them put back in hmm maybe maybe um Ellen is here. Hi, Peeps from Sunny Oslo. I have just cut out five projects. Goal of the day is to become friends with my Serger. Wish me luck. Nice nice Bree says no don't chop off your hair it looks lovely as is I, I don't think I ever would again unless I actually had to because I, I like wearing it up too much um then Elena says rainbow pixie mm. <laughs> Marie says I've gone naturally gray I got so fed up with col coloring it constantly yeah like I said I let I let a good sort of two inches of the gray grow out but I miss the colour. I miss the vibrancy of the colour. Maybe at some point. At some point. Michelle says, curl thread started on the peeps group. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Caroline says, dark green with purple streaks. Thank you. I knew there was some purple in there. 
Julian Pin says, when I was in my 20s, I once spent two whole Saturdays in the hairdressers, double spiral perm on waist length hair one week, then dyed auburn with blonde and copper highlights. I had to wear a hat on holidays. Oh, that sounds amazing. Monica says, good morning, everyone. Love long hair. I stopped dyeing my hair for four years now. I have a touch of grey strands, my longest um, easy at my bum, but just get it cut uh, but I just cut, cut it to get rid of the yellow grow out. And yes, you only need to wash the top. And I only wash my hair once or twice a week, Max. Yeah, I do the same. I only wash mine twice a week. Um, I probably sometimes leave it a day longer than maybe it should have been left. But those ones, again, I'll scrape it back up into a ponytail. And I am very careful not to put too much tension on it. I, when I put my hair up in a ponytail, I'll then loosen the ponytail so that it's not properly rigid. There's nothing worse than those headaches where you get where you've got too tight hair. Um, yeah. Uh, Michelle says, our first COVID lockdown resulted in about two inches of regrowth grey. So I, I said, to heck with it. Let it go. Now I look like Rogue from X-Men. Dark hair with a white streak in the front. Oh, so cool. I'd do that on purpose. I did actually ask my hairdresser if he'd put like a blonde streak in the front. And he was like, you can't bleach your hair. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I've got this experimental wild soul who wants to do all this stuff with my hair and my, my hairdresser's just like no but I want to uh, Angela says I have saved my daughter hundreds of pounds by putting in her hair extensions for her I'm not a hairdresser but I have the tools etc for putting in extensions easy to do Ooh, nice very nice yeah yeah, if I could do it on myself, I totally would, but you can't do it well on the back of your own head. Jane says, hi from Bristol, no longer colour my hair, it's completely white now. Had a poodle perm in the 80s. Yeah, I think mine was definitely a poodle perm. <laughs> Sal says, all this talk about hair gave me an idea with my villainess that I just created. She will have dark uh, black hair, but will glow bright red when she activates her superpower. I like it. I like it. Do you want to see the fabric that came from the cloth edit? It's going to be up in Tuesday's waffle. Or would you like a sneaky peek? That's a stupid question. Of course you would. So, I'll show you that one in a second. The first one is this, the linen silk blend. And it's got hummingbirds. Yeah, where are the hummingbirds? There's one. There's one, hummingbird. Come here, hummingbird. Look, hummingbird. And then there's a purple one as well. Hummingbird. They do still have a roll of this left. I got, um, when I was placing my order, there was only, the shop said that there was only three metres left. And Gabrielle, and there ended up being three and a half metres and Gabrielle has sent me the three and a half metres, bless her. But there is one bolt of this left in the shop, but it's the last bolt. So just, just, just FYI, in case you're interested. I it's a lovely weight. It's a like I say, ninety five percent linen, five percent silk. It's it's really really nice fabric. I was thinking I was going to do an eve dress with it, but I'm thinking I've got because I've got a lot of eve dresses, and then there's a lot of these ones are planned to be eve dresses. I'm thinking maybe I do some trousers with it. Maybe I do some trousers with it and a top. What do you guys think? What would you what would what do you think? Because I had there's quite a few pairs bits of this that's supposed to be trousers as well. But it's I mean it's it's beautiful. And then I had because um Gabrielle gave me a gift voucher and um, to uh, go shopping with with which was lovely. And I would have bought more of the this linen if there was more in the shop. And I kind of I must have just blanked and not looked at this one. Um, but I remember seeing this one on the Cloth Edits Instagram post and loving it. It's a Japanese cotton panel fabric. So it has these stripes running through it. And I've got three of the stripes and there is enough seam allowance just for this one so that I can use the stripe as trim. Um, but it's I think it's 150 wide. It's absolutely glorious. I'm not sure what I'm going to make with it yet, but I really want to take advantage of the stripes and use the stripes in an interesting way. Maybe even like right angles or something. So I've got three panels of this and the panels I think are like 96 centimetres. So I've got just under three metres of this one. 
it's, it's so pretty and vibrant. And again, it's going to go in with the leaf collection, which I probably, thinking about it, won't actually get started until May because I need to get my ball gown sewn for the retreat. Although, unfortunately, mum and dad's 70th birthday party has had to, had to be postponed because um, Ruth's father is very unwell and she's having to look after him and um, she can't do the dinner party on the evening that we had booked in Royal Coombe, which is really, really sad, but obviously completely understand. Um, so technically I could wear my Magnolia dress to the gala dinner of the retreat and then make my shiny, shiny dress for mum and dad's party, which I think we're going to do in, um, in June. So I'm not sure, not sure. Um, but so I need to get that done. And then I've got the giant pile of Cobra Corsage projects. So I don't think I'm actually going to start my leaf collection till May. I think I'm probably only going to, I've, I've got five collections in my, in my um, bullet journal that I'd like to get done today, that today, <laughs> uh, this year. I think I'm probably only going to get to three of them. Cobra Corsage, leaves, lemons, then into roses. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, Monica says, yes, please. <laughs> Elinda says, there's always the other, um, there is always the other option, the wigs. True, true. And I have tried wearing wigs previously and absolutely hated it. The, I did have polyester wigs. I haven't been able to afford a human a hair wig because um, they are really, really expensive. And I hated the polyester. If I just felt so uncomfortable and hot and yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. Um, so I haven't had a good wig wearing experience as yet. Lisa says, good evening, everyone. Hello, Lisa. Vanessa says, I've actually had hairdressers cry when try working on my hair. And there's so much of it and it refuses to do anything. Oh, yeah, I have. I mean, that's the trouble I've got. I haven't got like a lot of anything. It's just fluffy. I just have fluffy hair, which I don't think I do. I actually think I have curly hair. That's just I've just not learned how to use and to treat properly. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll get there. Uh, Alana says, pretty fabric. Isn't it beautiful? Debbie says that fabric is gorgeous. Love the touches of purple. I know. I was really, I, I, I was kind of like, I mean, an about it because I have so many leaf prints, but I was just like, you know what? No, I, I love it. It's going to, it's got, I've got to have it. Um, Sue says I ordered that. Good test. Megan said to Elena, wigs are a good idea. I'm thinning and scared to dye. Dye, uh, dye your hair. Um, yes. Uh, Marie says husband has just bought me the hydrangea Astoria from Lady McElroy. Oh, nice the Astoria I have that one that's the um which colorway did you go for Marie I do like that one um Megan says I love loud trouser and top combo um or suit yeah Lisa says oh yeah trousers would be nice Ellen says I am am I slow or did I just stumble over a fantastic tip using a cheap makeup brush on the inside of the inside of a machine instead of the minuscule brush that they come with, that comes with the machine, fishing out huge amounts of fluff, very satisfying. Uh, you, you, that has been going around for a while, but you're not slow, you've just discovered it on yourself, by yourself, which is ingenious, so yeah. Um, Elena says to Megan, you can style them very wild if you feel like it. Do any of you guys follow Mikey on Instagram? She's not on, she's not really um, posted on YouTube for quite a while now because of various reasons. Um, but that girl rocks a wig. She's even designed wigs. She's a special effects makeup artist. Um, but yeah, she she does some amazing stuff. And but the wigs that she wears, awesome, totally awesome. Um, Megan's got a smiley face. Uh, Monica says beautiful fabric. Yes, trousers and top for sure. Judy's here. Hello there. I feel as though I'm sort of out of touch with everyone. Welcome, Judy, and it's nice to see you. Linda says, when I was 16, I had thick hair down to my waist. I asked the hairdresser to cut it into a pixie. She refused and cut it shoulder length. I went back next week for my pixie. I'm good with the change. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. Like, I can kind of understand maybe being hesitant of, like, your customer coming back and just being like, oh, my God, what did you do to me? But it's their hair. If they want a pixie crop, give them a pixie crop. So, yeah, 
I hope she, wonder if you had to pay for the second haircut. It probably did, didn't you? Oh. Yeah, you've got one eyelash that's really not behaving. Come on. That's slightly better. Okay, right. Um, I need to have a look at these pattern pieces and see which ones need interfacing. I'm pretty sure it's the band, not the sleeve. not the back uh, that's the skirt yeah you're going to need interfacing aren't you interfacing yes collar needs interfacing front waistband back waistband front facing Oh, it doesn't say that wants interfacing. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, cuff wants interfacing, and that's the bottom part of the skirt. Sleeve tab, and then that's the back yoke. Okay. So, skirt piece, waistbands. Skirt piece. So I need to go and cut those out of interfacing. Oh, why can I just why am I so just lethargic about sewing? I love sewing. What is my problem? I know what my problem was, but meh. anyway, never mind. Um, Megan says, uh, Mikey does do great wig and seems so good at everything she tries. This is true. But the other side of things as well is, she'll say this herself, is that, you know, when she does her photos, like the photos that she puts up on Instagram, the little shoots that she does herself, taking her own editing, all of those, you know, she takes hundreds of shots to get two or three that she likes. So she presents the best stuff to the world, but there's a lot of trial and error that goes into getting that best stuff. So I think, I mean, we all know, we all know this, the um, social media, the stuff that people show on social media is a small percentage of the creme de la creme of their life. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sal says, I use a wig when I do the fourth Doctor Tom Baker cosplay because his hair is super curly, but mine is dead straight. Nice. Linda says, I did have to pay for the second haircut, but it was only $5 back then and 61 now, so it was a long time ago, lol. Still, I think that's cheeky that you knew what you wanted and she still wouldn't give it to you. Matthew says, so Sean, you can do it. <laughs> and Tom Baker is my favourite Doctor. <gasps> David Tennant's mine. My friend used to live next door to David Tennant in London and we were going out for her, I think it was her 30th birthday and we were walking past and there was quite a few Doctor Who fans in, her. we were a group of nerds basically and we were walking past the house and somebody was piping up with like, I can't believe you live this close to him and this guy with like a puffer jacket and a baseball cap was like walking along with his like baseball cap pulled down as far as he could and like, just as this really loud voice piped up, he was like, I can't believe you live next to him. He turned into his gate. He was just like, oh God, this poor guy. There's this group, a giant group of about 14 or 15 highly suspect nerds, like fangirling over the fact that David Tennant lives here. And the poor guy's heard this as he's walking into his, his front gate of his house. It's like, hi. <laughs> Um, one of the girls, one of her friends lives in Ireland and she'd come over to visit and there had, there was a little desk side table type thing left outside his um, driveway gates, um, obviously for the rubbish to collect. And um, this girl, she walked past and she went, it's David, table, David Tennant's table, picked it up and took it home with her. 
and we think it was one of his kids because there was sawdust in in it and stuff so we think it was the house you know the the where one of the hamsters or something lived um but she had it shipped back to Ireland and she's very proud that she's got David Tennant's side table in her house <laughs> uh yeah I still remember just just being like super cringe, just like, oh my god, he heard us fangirling over him. Poor guy. It's like I promise we're not creepy. <laughs> oh dear. Um the only famous person I've ever lived near is I had um Paul Merton was my upstairs neighbour in the block of flats I lived in on Tot- just off Tottenham Court Road. He was a massive, massive pothead. Like if you ever got caught in the lift with him, he was on the fifth floor, I was on the fourth. If you ever caught, got caught in the lift with him, you were high by the time you got out of the lift at the bottom. And we always used to see him going over to Sainsbury's for garlic bread. He'd just come back with all of the garlic bread. And he started learning to play the trumpet as well. And his front room was over my bedroom because I had the what should have been the front room of the house. I had it as my bedroom because the kitchen dining room, we turned the dining room area into a living room so that we could have another person live in the flat. Um, but yeah, he was a loud upstairs neighbour. Very chill though. <laughs> Uh, Elena says my bestie had hair till her to her knees and she cut it down to half she cut it down to half shaved bob cut wow Chris says good evening from Adelaide Uh, Sean I'm interlining a camp shirt for my husband would I need to hand tack each piece before I begin the shirt you can my way of doing it if it's a cotton fabric, if it's, if it's a fabric that's not super, super slippery, what I prefer to do is I will lay my piece of the original fabric out flat, make sure everything is nicely smoothed flat. Then I will pin the interlining to it and then I will sew it on the machine within the seam allowance. But say, for example, you, say, say it's a square. I know it's not going to be a square, but the principle is the same. Say it's a square. So I will sew this side and break my stitching and then I'll go over and sew this side and break my stitching and then I will sew the bottom side and then I will sew the top rather than sewing all the way round because if you sew all the way round you can squiff the fabric slightly when you turn corners and things so for, for example the way I do it is I will sew the side seam then I'll sew the center front seam then I'd sew the bottom seam then I sew the shoulder seam then I'd sew the armhole, then I'd sew the neckline kind of thing. So I wasn't doing, wasn't just going around the perimeter, but sewing opposite sort of pieces down. That way, hopefully everything should continue to lie nice and flatly and not get squiffy and out of alignment as you kind of like turn the fabric under the machine. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Megan says, I agree. We don't see people on social media. We see their representative. Exactly. Very well put. I like that. Moran says, David is the best. Megan says, poor David Tennant feeling stalked. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we could see his back garden from her, but her, her, her windows as well. And not that we weren't, it was just like, if you looked out of her windows, you could see his back garden. I didn't ever see him in his back garden, but you could like see his back garden kind of thing. And it wasn't like we were like all pressed up against the window watching, but I do think the table one is a very funny story. Kim says, I love um, David Tennant too. He was my favorite doctor. Natalie says, I literally haven't watched Doctor Who since the 80s. Used to watch with my grandfather when I was little. The Daleks were terrifying. Yeah, I remember. It wasn't the Daleks that terrified me. I remember, I think it was Sylvester McCoy. I can't remember which Doctor it was, but there was an episode where they were on a planet and there were lots of little robots and there was a swimming pool, but I don't think it was an actual swimming pool, but it was really cloudy and murky and somebody fell in and one of these little robots came up and grabbed their ankles and were trying to pull them down and drown them. I hated that episode. And then there was another episode where they were on a planet with cats, um, cat people. And the you know how cats' um, eyes collect light and, and look iridescent in the in the evenings. I just kept seeing those in the background and that will freak me out as well. Those are the two that really stick out in my brain. I didn't really mind it. I didn't like the Daleks, but I didn't mind the Daleks. Um, but yeah, I remember the cat people terrifying me and the little robots terrifying me. <laughs> yeah. Um... Sal says, Sean, I just watched the David Tennant movie, Bad Samaritan. I haven't seen that. 
he's always going to be Doctor Who. He was really good in Broadchurch. It was still like, I'm just expecting him to be like, yeah. <laughs> um, Leslie says, my Sojo is more like Slowjo since I started working again. I've been working on one shirt for almost a year. I'm going to start sewing for half an hour to 45 minutes to get it back. Oh, okay. Oh, actually, have you seen Sostein's video about how she balances being a full-time physician with sewing and like her little hacks for um, getting things done? She she has like a, an hour a day project where she, she like she's like, I must do like an hour a day of whatever type of sewing. And um, She's like, it's, it's just, you know, it's a nice habit to get into. But yeah, I thought that was like some of the stuff that she said in her video was um, was really interesting. So just, I don't know, maybe maybe give that a watch. You might help, might not. But so Steen's awesome. Hello says, I'm learning how to interlace slippery fabrics by hand. Yeah. Yeah, slippery fabrics, I probably wouldn't do under the machine. And I do, when I say behave fabrics that behave themselves, the rayons that I use tend to be well enough behaved and if I'm interlining a rayon it's usually with a cotton lawn so rayon I will do by machine but if it was super slippery silk and stuff like that then yeah totally by hand you have way more control way more way more control Chris says thanks makes sense yay I explained myself well Jojo says a hairdresser refused to cut my hair short like um uh, like your pixie she refused telling yes telling me I'd regret it I was a single mum and very active toddler and I was sick of, sick of it getting in the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, mum used to have hair like this long and she had hers cut, cut into a pixie crop when um, she had James and I because we were horror little brats that used to throw up in her hair and pull it and all those sorts of wonderful things. Angela says, I work in theatre and have met many famous people. We haven't had David Tennant there yet, but we've had um, John Sim. Oh, cool um okay celebrity encounter I mean I used to meet celebrities loads when I worked at Playboy because they were constantly in there um Dita Von Tees was my biggest disappointment though um she refused to have photos taken with the bunnies and it was really like it, it, because of yeah it was just, mm, <laughs> yeah no <laughs> that was a big disappointment um Chris North Although all the stuff that came out about him recently, I'm really glad I didn't get to actually, I was working, so I didn't spend any time talking to him or anything. A whole bunch of footballers. I've dated a famous person. Um, dated a couple of famous people, actually. Um, who else have I met? Oh, I remember James Martin came into the club. We were, we were on a graveyard shift, which started at 6.15 a.m. in the morning, and I am not a morning person. But he had to be in full glam bunny outfit. So I was in my bunny outfit and there's nobody in the club at all. And he was coming in for a meeting with Judy Chu, who is our, she's the Iron Chef. And she was the chef, chef de patron at the time. And so there was about four of us and we were sitting at one of the blackjack tables and we, we all had our ears on, but we're all lying kind of like, you know, really tired on the table like this. It was just like, it's 6.15 a.m. It's not, I mean, I think it probably, by this time, I think it was 8.30 and we were just, there was like sort of four, four or five, maybe six of us lying kind of like this on the table. And James Martin walked in and every single one of us was like this. But we all had our ears on. So it must have been a really hilarious kind of just like, hello. <laughs> it's like, morning, ladies. As you walk past. It's like, hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, who else? Oh, Lemmy from Motorhead used to come into a club I worked in all the time. He used to just come in and sit and chat. He was really sweet, bless him. Uh, loads of footballers who were all at a wankers. Couple of rugby players. Oh, dated another famous person. Oh, and a cricketer, famous cricketer. Um, who else? Oh, I remember um, James um, Masters. No, the guy who plays Spike. James, he is Masters, isn't it? remember um, sort of like bumping him into him just outside Tot Tottenham Court Road where I lived and it was just like, oh my God, you're amazing. He's like, okay, thanks. <laughs> and like running away from us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I went to see Tom Hiddleston in Coriolanus and then got to meet Mark Gattis, a whole bunch of people and kind of Tom, Tom Hiddleston blew me a kiss. I have a photo of it. That was fun. He was really good in that. One of the lines of the actual Shakespeare play is, 
I forget the lines. And it's a really intense scene. He's, the, he's sat in a chair in basically a linen shift and I'm guessing not much else. And he's sitting in there and, and one the actual line is, I forget the lines. And everybody in the audience think, thought he'd broken character and was just like, oh, that's really funny. Ha ha, like this. And he's like, carries on with the monologue. And it's like, oh, you meant to say that. You haven't actually forgotten your lines. Like, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, Jojo says I went to the salon toward it two doors down she did it straight away when I finished I walked um, past the window of the first salon looking at her smiling my head off and running my fingers through my hair nice Luisi's here hello um, Moran says he was excellent in Harry Potter yeah Luisi uh, says um, lol or sassed maybe Vox says hello peeps Monica says, I have a full summer vacation dress list to go, but Sojo is, is a thing, isn't it? Yeah. Usually my Sojo, I get it back by making an Eve dress or an Anna dress. Maybe I should just, I feel like guilty about doing that because I have a whole pile of projects cut out next to me, most of which I have made, in fact, none of them are new to me. I know I have made all of these ones before and... I know I like them all and I'm still just like meh um Carol Walton's here just listening in hello hi welcome Your Grace says hi peeps hope you're all well very well thank you uh Glenda says hello lovely peeps hello uh Sal says because of comic con type events I've met tons of famous people I've been stabbed by Chuck Norris with a cosplay knife I made I saw I saw that photo yeah I mean the comic cons I went to as well yeah William Shatner Patrick Stewart. There's a whole story about Patrick Stewart. My friend will kill me if I tell you, but it was really funny. Um, he was lovely though. The um, um, he was he was in um, Gilmore Girls and then Heroes. Je uh, Milo something. Him and his brother Ab uh, met them. Uh, ben Browder, oh, I love Ben Browder. I had my photo taken with Ben Browder, and the photographer, like, he put his arm around me, bless him. And then the photographer was like, "No, she's got her eyes closed in that one. We have to do it again." And he's like, "Okay, come back here." And it's like, <laughs> couldn't say a sensible thing. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean, Sal. Like, co um, Comic Con was brilliant. I mean, well, it was the first Comic Con I went to. I was walking around, and um, Tama Hussein was there with Danny Dyer. And I had, I was a VIP and I paid for a gold pass because you didn't have to queue to get in any, anywhere, which was brilliant. And I was earning a lot of money at the time. So I paid for a gold pass for my best friend as well. So we're walking around and um, he kind of came up to me and he went, are you famous? I was like, no. He's like, you look like you're famous. And he ended up giving me his phone number. Turns out he was married. Oh, um, Dominic Monaghan um, and, um, and, um, um, Nicholas, oh, the guy who plays Xander in, in Buffy, he was there as well. And they gave me their phone numbers, and it was just like he was dating Evangeline Lilly at the time, Dominic Monaghan was, I think. I, it was just like, oh, famous people, gross. Um, Milo Ventimiglia, Gallery, thank you, dear Grace. Sir. Yes, that's exactly who it was. Um, but yeah, no, none of those. <laughs> Nicholas Brandon, thank you. I just got their character names in my head. That's all, that's what I know them as. Um, yeah, comic conventions were fun. They were a lot of fun. We, um, Siobhan and I, who had gone to Coriolanus and bumped, in, bumped into Mark Gattis and oh, Moffat, Stephen Moffat, the, the Doctor Who writers. We bumped into them again at Comic Con because they were doing a um, they were doing a um, talk at comic Con, and they recognized us and they were like ladies it's nice to see you and I was like oh my god how do you I mean at the time I had bright red hair and Siobhan I think had bright purple hair so we, we, we did kind of stand out but yeah when did I see Coriolanus I think it was like the first year I was down on the island I went back Yeah, Coriolanus. There it is. So where are the photos? Of me hugging Paul and suspecting famous people. Mm. 
maybe I don't have them in here. I know I've got them somewhere. I mean, living in the capital city um, and near the theatre district, you tend to bump into famous people every now and again. And again, working in the clubs and stuff that I used to work in, it wasn't unheard of to bump into famous people. In fact, all the guys I dated, I'd met them through like events or something like that. So, hmm. can't find the photos. Oh, it, yeah. Tom Hiddleston blowing me a kiss. Thank you, Tom. I don't know where the rest of them have gone. Maybe I deleted them, but I can't imagine me deleting the ones of me cuddling Mark Gattis and Stephen Moffat. He was so drunk. It was really funny. <laughs> yeah, the creator of Sherlock Holmes. The Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah. They, he was very drunk, bless him. Very, very drunk that night. <laughs> um, where did we get to? Michelle says, lots of celebrities used to live in Bermuda. I met Iman and David Bowie as a teenager. Very cool. Uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas. Douglas's mum was Bermudian. Ah, okay, didn't know that, but very cool. Vox says, oh my, oh my gosh, you met um, Chuck and lived to tell the story. Oh God, um, I went, club, went clubbing with um, Chuck from Gossip Girl. What's his name as an actor? Edward Westwood, something like that. He was really sweet, he was very short. Um, it could have been because I was wearing giant heels, though. <laughs> Jojo says, you saw Hiddles in Coriolanus. Jealous doesn't even cover it. Gutted I couldn't get tickets. Siobhan, bless her cotton socks. I, I just moved to the island. Siobhan went to the theatre, the Donbar Theatre, and camped out overnight to get in line to buy tickets in person. And she managed to get seats together, which was amazing. We were in the balcony. Um the stage was that way and we were in the back so we were on the right hand side of the stage which I think is stage left as an actor I think that's right I haven't been on stage for a very long time um but yeah it was uh, it was an amazing experience and then I also booked tickets with my other friends to go and see it at the cinema because they were live screening it um which was also awesome oh so, yeah uh, Leslie says oh yeah loved when she made the Sleepy Hollow dress and the Anastasia dress oh yeah Big Racer says, yeah, you read those ones. Um, Megan says, was Milo sweet? They were both really sweet. And um, it had just been after the first season of Heroes. So I was just like, I really hope your character comes back because I think he'd gotten blown up. Um, but yeah, and he was like, so do I. <laughs> like, oh, no, they were lovely. They were really lovely, both of them. They were very nice. I, I queued up for an autograph from them. I wonder where my autographs are. I think they're back up there somewhere. Yeah. Um, Gig Racer says, clearly we watch all the same stuff. Yes. <laughs> Sal says, one of the most famous people I've met you didn't see on screen. He was the man who wore, built the Stay Puft Man suit in the original Ghostbusters movie. Oh, really cool. The first Comic Con I went to, they had Robert Englund there, who was um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. Um, and then there was a talk about Twilight as well. There was a whole bunch of the Twilight actors, like the vampire family that um, gets killed off in the first one. And I hadn't watched Twilight at that point. And so they were like, yeah, run, like loads of spoilers and stuff. Um, but yeah, that was fun. That was fun. I would like to go back to Comic-Con. I really enjoyed it. Nimue says, hello everyone, I have a whole bunch of tool to iron today and Flex Foam has been acquired thanks to Rachel. Oh, awesome, awesome. That's really cool, Nimue. Nimue says, don't forget to like the stream, peeps. Oh, yes, there's 131 of us and 61 likes. Kathleen says, my late husband was a very distant cousin to Val Kilmer, although they never met. My husband was much handsomer, sort of a cross between Michael Douglas and Robert Wagner. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, my mum... My mum's family is remotely related to Joanna Lumley. Her sister, Honey, her real name is Honey, married into the family. Mum spent one Christmas with her. She said she was lovely. Uh, Monica says, thank you for the reminder, Nimoy. Thumbs up. 
Megan says, oh, he just looks genius. Thank you for dishing. He was, I mean, they, the, like I say, I've seen uh, Mark Gattis and Stephen Moffat twice. Um, once was after Coriolanus because they'd clearly come to see it. I think uh, Mark Gattis was in it and Stephen Moffat had come to visit and watch. Um, and then, and, and uh, Stephen was pissed, really drunk. And then we saw them again at the comic convention, not that long afterwards. I think we went April to Coriolanus. And they were, like I say, they were stopping and having taking photos because there was a whole bunch of screaming women basically outside of the of the Dunbar waiting for Tom Hiddleston to come out. And the security guards were desperately trying to get them not to. And then all the other actors were coming out and they were having, they were signing pro, um, programs and stuff and they were being totally fine about it. Um, and then, um, yeah, the, those guys came out and they would, like, Sh Siobhan asked, she was like, can we have a photo taken with you? And, and he was like, totally. So we got a giant hug from him and it was just like, oh, wow, you've been, you've been on the alcohols. Um, but then we saw them again, like I say, at the comic convention and they were walking, I think they, one of the talks had ended and we hadn't got gold passes at that point. So Siobhan and I were sitting in, in staying in the, the talk area because um, I think, I don't think she was feeling too great. It was really hot. And so we were sat in there and they walked past again and they were like, ladies, nice to see you again. It was like, oh, you're amazing. <laughs> totally fangirling. <laughs> um, Johanna says, hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. Natty says, I met several actors through my ex-brother-in-law who is a storyboard artist. Wasn't in ter terribly impressed by any of them, lol. Yeah. I think I'd met quite a few in sort of like circumstances that weren't going to be their best. Like the comic, the guys at the comic con one was really disappointing. Like these people giving out their phone numbers to pretty girls and they're married. And like the, I texted him back before I didn't even Google, like I should have Googled, but he was cute. So I texted this guy back and we were chatting. I remember I was on holiday with my friend in Egypt and um, we were chatting back and forth. And then he was like, oh, so he said something about the missus. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, I'm married. And I'm just like, oh, my God, why are you talking to me then? And he was like, well, you know, I'm never going to divorce her. But, you know, can't doesn't stop me seeing other people. It's just like, oh. So, uh, no. <laughs> Immediately stopped talking about it to him after that. Um, Caroline says, my dad worked for the BBC. I was never allowed to ask for autographs, but I have some great stuff like um, Happy Birthday from um, John Snyder, the original Bo Duke from Dukes of Hazard. Oh, very cool. I think um, I met John Hurt once. Mum and I went to Forest Mere and um, Spa retreat for the weekend and John Hurt was there. Um, just walking around in a bathrobe. I mean, we were all walking around in bathrobes, but it was just like, Okay, that's different. <laughs> uh, Debbie says, I am looking forward to next year when Kalma, the Stargate convention, is finally back. Um, fabric for my pink Sam Carter cosplay in the loft waiting to be made. Very cool. Very cool. I'd really love to go to the Comic Con in San Diego, but I actually don't think I'd actually enjoy it that much unless I could afford like super exclusive tickets which I know I never would be able to afford um, because big crowds of people like that really freak me out. I wouldn't enjoy I, I Yeah, I, I know I wouldn't enjoy it, but I really want to go because San Diego Comic Con would be amazing. But yeah. Sal says, my Holy Grail celeb photo is Alyssa Milano, since I have a photo with the three other original Halliwell Charms sisters. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Caroline says, because he saw Frank View give dad a card and gift for me, John Hurt was a distant cousin of my dad through the Irish side. Oh, very cool. Got like some six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Right. It's been an hour and 18 minutes and I still haven't done anything. Let's get the darts marked. I don't want to cut out interfacing yet. So I'm going to put the interfacing, bits that need interfacing up here. And then let's mark in the darts and get those sewn. I can do that. Let's do it in little stages and see how the sojo goes. Close all those off. Actually plug my phone in. 
Oh, I see the see the thread. Thank you, Michelle. Right. Starts. I need a ruler. Are these straight dots? I think they are straight dots. Yes, there's no curving on these darts. It's the facing pieces. And they're straight darts as well. So let's mark the darts in and get those sewn. Got to start somewhere, haven't I? Okay. Put my pattern pieces away as I go. Maybe I need to, like I say, my, I was going to do a video of how to get your sojo back <laughs> when this happened. Um, maybe I need to take my own advice and make myself a tried and true, but maybe I need to do something like the 6563 t-shirt, which is a super quick project. There's not even, there's not even a fabric that I'm just like, oh my God, I need to make that up. Like, it's not like I've got block because I want to make a particular fabric up, but I'm telling myself I can't until I finish the Cobra Corsage pieces. Maybe I should make another one of these dresses that I'm wearing because I do love these dresses. And they are time consuming, but they are so worth it when they're done and I do love wearing them because I, I don't know if I finished the sentence that I started but my my usual way of getting my sojo back is making a tried and true or something um ooh, one of the ones that's sticking in my head from my leaf collection is that border print with the big white borders and the kind of beige, black and grey leaves on it. Um, and I want to do like a pleated and gathered skirt and then the Anna Bodice dress. That's the one that I really has been sticking in my head since I um, Why are words so hard? That's the one that's been sticking in my head since I did that video. Maybe I should cut that one because that wouldn't be too long a make. It would be a very quick make, in fact. Maybe I should do that one. I've made 20 things so far this year. Which is a lot less than my usual production levels. But never mind, it's not about quantity, it's about quality and the experience of making it. So, I wonder, two dots. Where did I get to with the chat? Elena says, we are back to traditions of hangout, uh, um, all that gets sewn darts. Yes. Although I am hoping to get a little bit more than sewn and darts, but that could happen, Elena. It could happen. I've kind of run out of fabric to show you. You guys have seen most of it by now. I mean, my viscose is a little bit messy. I could reorder that, I suppose, but... I don't like getting the viscose out because it's just bound to end up messy. Oh, there's a leafy floor viscose. Oh, 
back there that I bought on the Goldhawk Road. I might, I think I bought three meters for Eve. That could be quite fun. I kind of fancy making something that I can wear immediately. I need to try my um, Deer and Dice Sirocco's back on actually, because for a while I couldn't fit into them because I put too much weight on. But I need to try those on again, because there's some jersey back here that I bought specifically to be a Sirocco. And that isn't too long a make. Did I actually get one whole one of those done with you guys during Hangout once? It does go up the corner. Looks good. Get some more darts marked in. I love this fabric. I, I do really like the dress that I made from it this week, the 5951. I just really didn't enjoy the process of making that thing. But I, I was listening to one of the Bridgerton audiobooks and I was really enjoying listening to the audiobook. And I'd run out of stuff that I could do that wasn't sewing. And, and listen to an audiobook and and I have to be doing something when I'm listening to an audiobook I can't just sit still that would drive me batty so yeah These darts marked in. Maybe, yeah, I think maybe I will try on the Sirocco. Because there's definitely fabric in my stash for a couple more of those. Um, I tried on my grey dress. The I made three last year, and I altered the pattern for my new larger size. I tried it on last night, and it's too big for me. It was the all over lemons one that I tried on. Um. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Do I? Do I put these things away, like my empire waist? trousers that I made they're too big for me um the three the three gray dresses that I've made they're all too big for me do I put them away for a rainy day like I've done with my smaller clothes do I try and alter them do I remake the bodices on them or do I remake the entire dress because I was thinking if I took the bodice off the skirts on all of those are gathered skirts, so I could gather it up a little bit more to put it into a tighter waistband for my new shape. And then do I keep the um, larger size bodice rather than trying to alter it? Because they don't take a lot of fabric, those bodices. And so I was thinking maybe I should start a little stash of fabric kept for, you know, like a the slightly larger size so I can because basically what you'd have to do is unpick the zip at the waistband enough so that you could unpick the whole waistband and take the zip out of the top half of it and then remake the dress in the smaller size. Um, put, the, put the zip back in. You could either leave the zip on the bodice or the skirt, depends which probably actually on the bodice because of the way that the top gets clipped so yeah just unpick the zip, the zip from the skirt portion and um take the waistband off and then maybe i put the zips in like keep them in a box for my like larger size i mean 
I could totally just remake the dress and keep one for when I'm bigger and one for when I'm smaller because I don't know but then I want to lose a bit more weight so would it, should I just wait until I've got to my goal weight I mean I probably should that would make sense rather than having to remake a third dress or change or alter it for a third time I don't know what would you guys do let's see let's see where did I get to with the chat oh sorry I'm very behind Uh, Vox 3D says, peeps, anyone else wanting to sew so many different things that you get stuck deciding where to start first would, uh, first world sewing problems? Maybe that's my problem. I have too many things up there and I'm just like overwhelmed by it all. Um, but yes, I know exactly what you do, what you mean. Uh, Jojo says, don't get jealous now, peeps, but I once sold a cookie to the actor who played um, Shifty in the 80s sitcom Bread world be beating celeb anecdote there no I mean yes totally Jojo has us all beat I went to school with um um Bill Treacher's daughter he was Arthur on EastEnders I remember once asking her if um she knew anyone from EastEnders because my dad had that weekend introduced me to Angie she'd come to the Cavendish Hotel um for some kind of event or something and dad had woken me up we were staying at the hotel um, so that I could wake up in time to go and meet her. And um, I had my photo taken with her, black and white photo. I still have it somewhere. Um, me cuddling my care bear. And I remember at school, I was just like, does anyone know anyone from EastEnders? And everyone just started laughing at me. And I was like, what? And she's like, my dad's Arthur. And I was like, oh, I met Angie yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah. I took that photo, actually, to the very first comic con that I went to, the one with Tamar Hussain was there. And um, Nasty Nick was there as well as Angie. And I paid to have her autograph. And uh, she's like, which photo would you like? And I was like, would you mind signing this one? I met you when I was like eight years old. And she's like, oh, I remember that night. Not me, but the night. And um, yeah, Nasty Nick was like, didn't you do a good job growing up? It's like, why are all male celebrities creepy? <laughs> So yeah, I then had um, I took the photo back to the Comic Con and had it signed, which was really sweet. But yeah, it was just so funny. Like, does anyone know anyone from Senders? I'm like, yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> I live with one of them. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, Jojo Jojo has a speak with the celebrity stories there, definitely, one hundred percent. Um, Linda says, what is your absolute favourite pattern to sew? That is what you should sew. Then you really feel like sewing again. See, that's the trouble. That isn't even exciting me. Like, I have really, really lost my sojo. Really lost my sojo. Um, I would say the Eve dress, the Anna dress, the 8577. I have an 8577 cut out and ready to go and it's going to be glorious and I have absolutely zero interest in sewing it. Which is not good. But I mean, it does happen. It does happen every now and again. You do thoroughly lose your sojo. Right, all my darts are marked and pinned. I'm going to catch up with the chat because I'm really behind and then I will get on to actual sewing them, which will probably be about in another 20 minutes. <laughs> but yeah no Linda that's usually my advice as well I just have zero interest in doing it Debbie says how about going through your patterns um go through patreon and see the um the pat you, uh how about going through your patterns got through patreons and see if they inspire inspire you they can be forgotten about because they are not um on your hard drive and not your shelf um yeah I went through and made a list of all the outstanding sew-alongs. There's a whole bunch of those that I need to do. I don't know. I just, I'm, yeah, you're right. And there needs to be that moment of inspiration of like, oh, I need to make that thing. Caroline says, I have a Cracker Jack pencil and a Blue Peter badge. <gasps> Very cool. Uh, Natalie says, uh, yes to Vox 3D. Sal says, you peeps should look up celebs with the same birthday as you. I have Mila Jovovich. Sarah Paulson, Ernie Hudson, and others. Ah, cool. Oh, yeah, mine's the first of May. I wonder who I've got. Let's have a look. 
Rachel Lynn says, good morning all. Good morning. Natalie says, Tom Hardy's birthday is one day after mine. Tom Hardy is rather nice. Does anyone watch those um, interviews on YouTube with like your favourite person, like Tom Hardy answering questions whilst playing with puppies or kittens? It's just like, oh, I don't care what they're saying. It's just so cute. Jane says, bought a complete set of Marshall's Cavendish Make It Easy patterns in instruction book from the early 80s, a part uh, work uh, a part you work or you work you bought fortnightly surprisingly on trend if you ignore the 80s styling I quite like 80s fashion actually there's a lot of 1940s influence in it um Caroline says Rachel Weiss is exactly five years younger than me nice she is very pretty she's very pretty Elena says to Vox 3D most definitely I need to cut five projects but first I need to test my bag pattern You'll have to let us know how that comes out, Elena. Lala Palooza says, I'm back. Mother-in-law coming over and had to go go flurry on tidying. Nice. Natalie says, um, shirt dress, pinafore or tiered skirt to help me choose, please. Mm, shirt dress. Uh, Megan says to Natalie, pinafore. <laughs> Jennifer's here. Hello, gorgeous peeps. Hi, Jennifer. Good Grace says, maybe I need to start listening to audiobooks. I tend to read a lot, which means I'm not doing anything else for as long as it takes me to finish the book cough series. Yes, I used to inhale books. I loved reading. I have found, though, that my eyesight, I, I have one long and one short-sighted eye. And I've, I, I really struggle to focus on the page after I've been sewing all day. And um, I'm so... I, I love Audible. Um, if you do decide to sign up for Audible, please do use my affiliate link because I get a bounty, as it were, for jo you joining. And you, I think you get the first two months free. It might just be a month. I think, no, it's a 30-day trial and a free free title as well. Um, I have, how many titles do I have in my library at the moment? 126 titles. Um, and there's only one of them that I've not started yet. I absolutely love, I love them. I love Audible. Um, the, it really, really matters if you like the voice of the narrator, but so far they've all been really, really good. Uh, oh, ow, that was my, um, yeah. Lala Palooza says pinafore. Monica says, I made a second Sirocco three weeks ago and I think it's, um, your fit tips and thanks to your fit tip tips Sean. I absolutely love it it's, it's fast easy feel good so for sure yeah I've got here we go I'm getting the fabric out so I've got this thistles French terry and I've got this cherry blossom fridge cherry. Thinking about it, probably ought not to make the Sirocco in either of those because I'm not sure that my hips would be that forgiving in, in white or pale fabrics, but they would also make great dresses, those French cherries. So it might end up being those. Oh, I'm gonna put away the dress that I'm actually wearing and then I'm rolling over with my chair. That's not good. Let's not do that. Oh, come on, you went in, you, you came out of there, you're going to go back in there. There we go. Nice. Um, Michelle says, send them to me. Good Grace says, I don't get on with the narration I've heard. The voices put me off as they don't read in the, in the way that my head does. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've told you guys this before. There was a Georgette Heyer book, um, Powder and Patch, and it was an American narrator, and immediately it was just like, no, no, that's just wrong. It wasn't good. Uh, Nimoy says to Natalie, pinafore can be most easily combined with different tops for changeable weather right now. See, I think of a shirt dress like that as well, but then I have just put a sew along out for the shirt dress, so yeah. Uh, let's see. Natalie uh, read that one. Megan says, free, uh, free Arthur Fowler. Oh, I forgot you went to prison. Yes. Jennifer says, I was once propositioned by a celebrity. He asked my husband if we were in open marriage. Oh, wow. 
Uh, Gig Racer says, what about switching to some bag making? Maybe something a bit different might help you find your sojo. I mean, I have to make this a net bag. I'm waiting on mum for this a net bag and um, probably will be doing that tomorrow. I waxed lyrical about bags yesterday. There was a whole bunch that I want to make, but the hardware and interfacing and stuff is really expensive. Um, so I need to cool my jets a bit on some of the projects that I would like to make. But yeah, that's not a bad idea. And I, w I am looking forward to seeing how this bag turns out. It's going to be a pretty one, I think. Uh, Jennifer says he's been in movies with some very big celebrities. Oh. Lala Palooza says, I met Wayne Gretzky's family father at a Chinese restaurant my 40th birthday. Did not take the sting out, out of turning 40, turning, uh, turning 40 away. Uh, Carol says, good morning from New York City. Good morning. Kathleen says, I've had two weeks sewing hiatus, but now have to get back to sewing my Easter dress or won't be ready by next weekend. I'm so looking forward to Easter next next week. I um, I've bought mum, dad and I the um, Hotel Chocolat dark cabinet and it's under the stairs. And the fact that it's not been opened is fairly impressive. <laughs> it's the only reason it's not been opened is because if I open it, I'd have to replace it and it was expensive. <laughs> so I am, I'm, 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 I'm behaving myself. Um, Box 3D says stunning. Huge sleeves are all the rage for me this year. Huge sleeves are good. Carol says, I think my best celeb was waiting on Ginger Rogers. Um, she was lovely and bought the same robe dressing gown as I did, and they still have it. <gasps> wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. Um, Sal says, Sean, my first celebrities, Jamie Dorna, Dorman. Uh, Julia Benz and Joanna Lumley. I didn't know Joanna Lumley had the same birthday as me. I wonder if mum mum must know, because like I say, she is related to us by 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 marriage. By marriage. Uh, Kathleen says I have a huge pile of spring summer things to make. Decided to just list them in order to sew. Otherwise, I just look at them all and get overwhelmed. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um. Elena says, I'll send you photos if it works. And if I would be able to scan pattern pieces, I would send them to you too. Oh, thank you. I would love to, I just love to see how it goes on and how you get, how you get on with it. Box3D says, maybe I should make a list too. I think list sounds like a good idea. I do enjoy a list. Rachel Lynn says, that thistle French terry is gorgeous, isn't it? And then says, I love the thistles. Um, Sal says to Carol, Ginger Rogers was a goddess. I'm I own digitally her movie Roberta, 1935, starring also Fred Astaire. I, 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 she, she was the lady who said, I do everything he does except backwards and in heels. <laughs> awesome. Um, Angela says, always listen to Audible when I'm doing the laundry on shows. Um, it gets me through the ironing, particularly shows that are shirt, um, shirt heavy. Oh, yeah. Claire says, love Audible too. It's the perfect gardening or sewing companion. I have a membership for many years and now have 100, 1,094 titles in my library. It was just a handful unfinished. Wow. I was thinking I was given my 126. I have to say I do repeat listen to a lot. Like I've got all the Harry Potter books and the Scholomance series and all the Georgia Heyer. I do repeat listen to those a lot um jojo says same i adore audible I'm currently sat on 177 titles i can get lost in it you're right about the narrators too they really can make or break a book totally dipsy552 says morning from new york dear gracer i know exactly what you mean worst is if i'm a series i'm down for the count as long as it takes to get through worst if it's a series as i'm down for the count as not for as long as it takes to get through i will listen to some audio box books but not all yeah, I just, I just really struggle to to read a physical book anymore because my eyesight, after concentrating all day, just my eyes are just like, no, let's not. Shall we not? Uh, Nimoy says, the forecast promises nicer weather and temperature for next week, so I hope to get to wear my bunny pinafore to work on Thursday. <laughs> really going to need photos of that, Nimoy. Kinda says, hello from Denver, Colorado. Met Eddie Murphy in an elevator while at the Peabody in Orlando. Ah, oh, very cool. Uh, Dipsy552 says, if you are in the US, I'm not sure of anywhere else, but through my local library, I've signed up with Hoopla and Libby, where you can borrow free books, both audio and ebooks, as well as movies and music, etc. 
Um, my best friend Tati um, borrows audiobooks through the library on CD. And then she still has a CD player and listens to them on that. So, yes, that's definitely a good idea. Audiobooks can be really expensive. I remember I, I've bought the Harry Potter books twice now. I bought them once actual cost and one of them was £65 um, on Apple. And then I changed my Apple ID and they were like, oh, yeah, well, you can't transfer your books and stuff over. They're not yours. They're your Apple IDs and they're only your Apple IDs for as long as you have it. And it's like, well, no, that's ridiculous. And I actually went through and found all the receipts for all my Apple books. And I was just like, the reason I'm changing this is because I'm being stalked by somebody. So all of my, my emails and stuff had to be changed. And um, you cannot discriminate against me because of that. You need to give me my things that I paid for. And um, I finally talked them into it. But yeah, I spent a fortune on Harry book, Potter books. Um, like I say, one of them was 65 quid for the audio book, for the audio series. But on Audible, they were all just one credit, which is eight, eight pounds a month. So it was just like, done. Yeah, I was very angry with Apple when they were trying to be like, yeah. And do you know, like, I think that's one of the things that I don't like about digital content is that actually it's not yours to, you, you can't pass down your digital library to other people um, if you pass away, like you would be able to with your CD collection, record collection, DVD collection, those kinds of things. Um, it's in the terms and conditions. I don't know, th I, I, this my information might be old now, but at the time it was just like, no, actually it doesn't belong to you. You're just basically renting it for a really long time. You can't ha pass this on to other people. It was like, you mean you're spending hundreds, if not thousands, on a collection of something that actually isn't technically yours? So, yeah, I was a bit annoyed with them for that one. Eh, why won't this pin behave? Okay. So we are an hour and 46 minutes and 29 seconds in, and I have sewn my first line of stitching. Is that right, isn't it? So. Yeah, I went through a really bad phase with an X, and um, I changed my number about seven times. And then, um, like, all of my online IDs and stuff like that. And one of my friends just kept passing on my new number. And I mean, it just got to the point where it was like, whoever it is, please stop. It's not big and it's not clever and it's not okay to help somebody harass somebody else. Um, and like I started whittling down my friend list because my my Facebook at the time was I you know I had hundreds of people on there like anyone you came across it was like oh Facebook yeah awesome and um, I recently went through and culled it I think I told you guys this as well I was like I was even thinking about just turning it off completely but I have to have a Facebook account so that I can have the um, Facebook pages for um, for uh, Kittenish Behaviour, like the official one. I mean, technically, I actually don't own the um, Kittenish Behaviour Peaks group. Jennifer does. She's the one that started it. She is the creator of the page, not me. I'm only an admin. So, um, but to be able to interact with you guys on there and actually use it, I have to have a Facebook personal account. So, me. Yeah. But I was thinking about just like deleting everybody off of there. Just because I just, I'm just finding it very overwhelming. But that's, again, that's maybe kind of just what's going on at the moment, not something that is going to last for a long period of time. So maybe I should just kind of just not use it and, and just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, dear. Mental health is a whole minefield of fabulousness, isn't it? <laughs> Jennifer says, well, ha, 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 but I'd give it to you. I would not hold it hostage. Oh, I know you wouldn't, Jennifer. I know you wouldn't at all. I know, I know, I know completely. That, that wasn't my point. It was, just, it was just like, I was like, yeah, no, I need to have a Facebook because I need to maintain my pages. And it was like, actually, page, <laughs> just the one page. <laughs> 
Um, Sal says, if you love David Tennant, there is an audible of him reading H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Yeah, he has an amazing voice. I don't know if I'd want to listen to him read that book, though. Um, it is an amazing book, and he is an amazing actor, and I'm sure it is an amazing rendition, but it's just not my cup of tea, which is weird, I know, because I love sci-fi, but yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll have, to, I'll have to listen to the sample and see what I think. Laurie says, I am new from South Africa. Love your channel. Perhaps go through your patterns. Always helps with my sojo. I, you know, you guys keep saying that and you're not wrong. Because I, I actually, I do think it would be interesting to do like a, how many of these have I actually sewn as to how many of these I actually own? Because I actually have sewn quite a few of my patterns. Yeah, but mind you, I did go through all of them in September, but that was to reorganise and de-stash, wasn't it? Not to just for inspiration. I think I want, maybe we should do that in a minute. When I, when I, once I've got my, my darts sewn, like Elena said, the you know the, the one and only thing I'll get done today. Maybe we should go through my dress patterns and sort of like try and pick out one that sparks some like interest. You know what? Hang on. Let me get these darts sewn and then we'll go into that. Um, so that's my front darts done. Let's do the two back darts. Then we can start tying the knots off. And Go from there. Nearly done. Still got to hem both of those skirts back there as well. That was something on my list of to-dos for this week and I have not done it. I've only been in the sewing room twice this week though, the two days that you've seen vlogs for. I might go to the cinema you know, tonight, you know guys? I haven't been to the cinema in a really long time. The last one I went to see was No Way Home. Yeah. And Fantastic Beasts, the Dumbledore one's out, and I would like to see that. Right. Let's catch up with the chat and tie some knots. It's too large. Um, whereabouts in South Africa are you, Laurie, by the way? I've only ever been to Cape Town, but I loved it. Mum and Dad have been a little bit further. They went to, they spent Christmas in Port Elizabeth and then dro drove along the garden route to Cape Town for New Year's to meet me there. Uh, Gig Racer says to Sal, I would definitely love listening to that. I also enjoyed Stephen Fry narrating uh, one of his books. Oh, yes. Mythos, Heroes, and Troy, read, uh, written and read by Stephen Fry, are amazing. Highly recommend. Highly, highly recommend. I love how all the um, the Greeks have completely like anachronistic ac accents as well. Like there's a bit of Irish and Scottish and all sorts going on in there. A bit of West Country farmer and everything. Um, Megan says, I feel perhaps Apple has betrayed everyone that has stuck by them since the early days by charging and upgrading us to death. Yeah. Yeah. And then the updates where certain phones become obsolete and apps and stuff won't work with them. And oh, yeah. And the prices of them now are just unbelievable. I mean, they were always expensive, but wow. Um, Sal says, just have you in your 
will your account name password to be handed out over to the person you want when you when you die i mean yeah obviously you can do step, definitely do something like that but i just think i think it's bad that a collection a valuable collection of somebody's life interests movie music and otherwise books and otherwise um is just actually not theirs um to be passed along i just i i just think that's not right not right but yeah you're totally right make sure that um passwords and accounts are all listed somewhere so that somebody can go through and administrate everything that they need to for you 100 percent um Mega says, the stalking is so scary, I feel your pain. One guy wouldn't get off my roof with his beer at 4am. Oh, wow. That isn't good. I, mean, this, I think the worst thing this guy did was um, he, he kind of talked my so-called friends into believing his side of the story, even though I had proof. And then talk to them into show um getting um fixing up a meeting with my new boyfriend where he sat down and went through my with my new boyfriend all the horrible things I'd ever done to him um yeah that was such like a betrayal I mean I'm guessing it, that was the friend that was passing on my number to him like I mean kind of obvious but such a, like I, you know I lost a friend that night as well I mean thankfully the new boyfriend was just like you could be fucking kidding you know I've heard her side of the story and seen the text messages. Like this guy even took me to court and I won. Um cost a shit ton of money. Um had to hire a barrister and everything. But yeah, I won. And you know, he was trying to cherry pick text messages and conversations. Um, he was cherry picking out things that made me look bad without the context and the full conversation. And um, so I, sub I submitted everything, which was embarrassing because there was a whole bunch of stuff in there that I wouldn't have wanted anyone to see, like a whole bunch of personal stuff. But it was just like, well, no, this is not this is not the actual context of the, this thing. Like this is. And um, the judge was a female judge my barrister the minute we walked in and it was saw as a female judge she was just like he was like settle settle now I was like no I haven't done anything wrong and um the female judge was at the end of it she was like look you clearly thought the sun shone out of her ass not in so many words but you clearly thought, thought the sun, sun shone out of her backside you were clearly in love she wasn't you did some stupid things you've tried to prove the stupid things that you've done were manipulated by presenting us with an infinitesimal side of the story she's provided the whole side of the story nah nah you're wrong like she's right you have to pay her legal fees which were around 15 grand and um yeah that was that was that was that one. Oh, that wasn't fun that was not fun at all uh, Megan says, when I threatened to call the police, um, but I threatened to call his mother, he left in a hurry. Thank goodness for that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lisa's here. Hola. Hola. Buenos dias. How are you getting on with your new serger? I haven't watched the video yet. <laughs> Spoilers. So, yeah. Uh, Megan says, hilarious, but awful. Yeah. 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 Um, Nimoy says, my collection of Doctor Who audiobooks is determined by which one um, David Tennant has read. Ah, yes. Sue says, hi, new to your channel, loving all your makes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue, and welcome. Elena says, what about your digital patterns? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few that I haven't had printed yet that I would like to make. Um... But then I have to have them printed and I'm worried I'm going to lose the impetus. I think I'm really excited about the Sicily slip dress. I think maybe that's one that I need to, to do because actually it's a really simple dress. Like the techniques for sewing it are slightly more advanced because it's cut on the bias and it's slippery fabrics. But I, I think maybe I need to do the Sicily slip dress in the black fabric. I think that might 
be something that I should do because I've had it printed. I'm excited about it. I have three fabrics ready for it if it works. So, yeah. Um, Megan says to Jennifer, thanks. I chose funny. I chose a funny instance to include rather than scary. Yeah, uh, there are way too many scary ones. Way too many scary ones. Jennifer says, um, welcome people new to the channel. Please join us in the Kittenish Behaviour Peeps group on Facebook. You only have to answer three fun questions to join. Yes, they are very ridiculous questions. And you can say no to be Shiana being your feline overlord. It's totally fine. She will never understand, but you can say no. Sal says, I'm taking the, my kids to the movies Wednesday to see Sonic 2. I couldn't finish Sonic 1. I, um, I tried, but I couldn't get through it. <laughs> Diane says, hello from California. Love all your sew alongs. Thank you so much, Diane. And welcome and good morning. Mary, Mary Ellen O'Neill. Hi from Churchville, New York. I've seen a full circle. I've never sewn a full circle skirt. Could you show your or explain how you even the hem after it drops on the bias? I have a standalone sew along for drafting and sewing your own circle skirt. And I have a video for leveling hems, Mary. If you go to my channel, there's a little search box on the right hand side. And if you put level hem, then the video will come up. And then I talk you through about six different methods. It might be five, six, five different methods of how to level a hem. And you don't need fancy equipment for it. So fingers crossed there's something in there that will, will help you, Mary. Um, hopefully that works. Jojo says, my sojo has been slowly MIA since New Year. I've sewn two things this year and I'm still tidying mount fabric more. It's not really helping, but I'm having some amazing fabrics that I'm rediscovering. Well, you will soon be sewing a bag, Jojo. And you'll be surrounded by other like-minded people who also want to sew all of the stuff. So hopefully some of our sojo will rub off in each other. Not that you're taking it away from the other person, but just an increase, increase of sojo for like all of the people under one roof. That would be good. Megan says, that is awful, Sean. I'm sorry. It gets out of hand, divides friends, and is horrible in, in feeling so unsafe. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, he was a scary one. There were some, there were some less than pleasant incidents with him. Laurie says, I live in Pretoria and my family lives in the um, in the garden room. I'm planning on moving there in the next in the next year. Mum and dad loved Nisner. and um, I think that was their favourite. They stayed in a like a, a kind of um, turn of the century cottage. I mean, when I say cottage, it was huge, but you know, oh, it was a bit beautiful. And Nisner's like the bay where there's Nisner seahorses, from what I remember. Lisa says, haha, great, thanks. It was a bargain. Nice. I'm so glad it was awesome. I need to watch the video. I will watch the video. But yeah, I saw that come up pop up this morning on my feed and it was like, aha. Uh, Natalie says, I had a friend who thought he was my boyfriend and the police and I, don't know. I had a friend who thought he was my boyfriend send the police to my house when I broke up with him, claiming I'd stolen from him. I hope he got the mental health help he needed. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. My, um, one of my friends, and I, I don't think she made this phrase up, but one of my friends, um, said something along the lines of, um, certain guys, and again, and again, this is not all guys, I'm aware of this, but certain guys think if they put enough nice guy tokens into the girl vending machine, eventually sex will come out. And, um, yeah. I mean, I have friends that are male who are just friends and that's very very nice but I have had people do that in the past just be like come on I'm, a, I'm your friend when are you when are we going to get together and it's like that's not how it works and you literally just being my friend because you eventually want to it's like no 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 <laughs> so yeah uh, Mary says thanks no worries let's I hope you find it Mary also if you want to join the Facebook group there's like you can ask for help in there the hive mind is great there's I think there's 1300 of us now it might be slightly more maybe 1500 can't remember there's a lot of us um but yeah you can put questions in the peeps group as well because if I can't that's that's the place I'm definitely the most active um but if I can't answer then somebody else definitely knows the answer and they can they can help you out in the peeps group as well Evie said the circle skirt video is actually how I found you last year so glad I looked oh cool 
Uh, it sounds like your ex was a narcissist. They love to twist everything to be in their favour, no matter how untrue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure his side of the story is very, very different. I'm sure his side of the story is very, very different. <laughs> I just, I, I went through a really, really tough time um, whilst I was dating him. Like, that's when my allergy to makeup started. And I had been wearing a full face of makeup every day it was my armor I would it, it even go out of the house I would have to have a full face of makeup on and I've been doing that since I was 15 years old and I didn't need it at the time but it was just it made me feel better about myself and like I say armor and um that's when my makeup allergy happened when I was with him and having the I also made my my living out of the way I looked at the time as well and having the ability to make your look, self look your best or how you perceived yourself to be your best taken away overnight was and again I think I've spoken about this a couple of times on the channel but it was really really devastating which sounds very very shallow but it you know my a whole bunch of my identity being tied up in and again like I say I made a living out of the way I look so a lot of my identity and self-worth was tied up in the way I look as well as the person that I am and having that taken away from you overnight was was terrifying and it got to the point where this guy was, I, I didn't leave my flat for about three months. Um, he was dropping off groceries. He was bringing over food before he went to work. He was, you know, like alienating m me from my friends. He was really isolating me and getting to the point where I was just in this tiny little insular bubble of me and him and me not leaving my house. And yeah, I, I have, I do have a temper and it takes, it takes a, a lot to get me angry. I, I have a very even temper up until the point that I am made very, very angry. And then I can snap and screaming at people is not the answer. It, having a reasoned conversation is much, much better, but he used to, he used to manage to push every button that I had to the point where we'd have screaming blazing rows constantly and I mean we were together for a year um yeah we were together for a whole year and he didn't like it that I started kind of coming out of my shell again and 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 I broke up with him well okay I broke up with him quite a few times and he didn't accept it. And I think that was when he started getting to the pissy point when he was just like, I, I ended up dating somebody else. I got my self-confidence back. I kind of picked myself up off the floor. Like that, that, that relationship could have gone in one of two ways. He could have been super supportive during what was happening or he could have just taken advantage of it and, and like he did. Um, but again, this is my perspective and my look back at it. I'm sure his perspective is incredibly different. Um, because everybody's perspective on their life is very, very different. And they're never the villain. You're always the hero in your own story. Um, I think that's why actors who believe that they're villain, when they portray villains, they're like, well, he thinks he's the hero. And I think that's why some like actors really come across with amazing villains, because the villain just totally thinks that they're in the right. And that's why they're doing all the things that they were doing. Um, but yeah, like I say, he is the villain in my story, but I'm sure he's not in his. And this is just my side of things and just my perspective on things. And all this, this also happened a very, very long time ago, 17, 18 years ago. So, you know, rose tinted glasses as well. But he, he never, he was never, he, he wasn't not physically abusive, but thankfully not in a way that like, it didn't escalate. It was, the whole thing could have been so much worse. So, yeah. <laughs> oh dear yeah that was a <laughs> that was a whole chapter but yeah the um the thing that was that came out of that is that I kind of got got it into my head that I didn't need makeup to be able to face the world um which was like I say something that was a really kind of long way of getting around you know it yeah <laughs> Jojo's just texted me, bless her. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, where did I get to? 
Sal says, if that is why they wanted, then they were never your friend. Exactly, Sal. Exactly. Exactly. And like I say, I know it's not all men. I do know that. I do know that. Um, the trouble is it's some men and that's the pop- that's the problem. But yeah, they never, you know, anyone who's like, there, there are, I, yeah, this is a whole other thing that you can go down but that you know there are people online who are just like well if I'm nice to them they deserve they give me things I mean there's a whole culture around it I'm not going to name it I'm not going to go into any more detail but yeah it was just like oh yeah yeah um Jenny says hello everyone I'm back from USA really miss my sewing machine did you have a lovely time though I think you went to Joanne's and Michael's and stuff didn't you you're in the peeps group aren't you I know I've seen it um jennifer says wow i've had stalkers but never that bad i i mean me it's it's one of those things i've had a past relationship that i could see going down exactly that same route um that was sort of like five years ago just as i was starting properly waffling on the channel i think i was doing weekly waffles then and um i i, I saw it going down that route and I was just like, no, I can't do this. It was the same type of blazing rouse. And it was just like, this is not a good side of me. I don't enjoy this side of being, me being brought out. I do not like it. But the previous relationship had given me the awareness that this is the sort of, this is this is not right. This is not what this should be. Um, so, yeah, I nipped that one in the bud very quickly, thank goodness. So, yeah. Heron says, your story reminds me of a book I read recently, The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I'm not sure I want to read that one. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting period. Um, Evie says, sounds like gaslighting narcissists won't ever support your happiness or health or will likely always try to isolate you. I've been on a year's long journey in healing from abuse. And this, great, this, place, this group is the first place I've been actually been talking again. The group is such a lovely place to feel safe and chat about silly things now and then. I'm so glad you feel like that, Evie, because that's what I want this place to be is a, Karen says it's a great book. I'm sure it is, but it sounds a little too close to home. <laughs> um, but yeah, Evie, sorry. This is, that's, that's lovely to hear because that's what I want this group to be is a safe space for us to all be able to come and chat all things pretty and light and fluffy and escape from the world for a little bit if, if that's what you need so I'm really glad that that's how you feel guys I'm really gonna need to go and get myself a drink because I my my voice is is disappearing and I didn't bring one down with me today so I'm going to leave you for a second because this is yesterday's water and I forgot to take it back up with me so I'm gonna go and grab myself a glass of water I shall be back momentarily leave the mannequin alone a lot of you I'm gonna I'll move the thing over so you can see more fabric. There you go. Look at the beautiful fabric. Do not disturb. <laughs> you guys cannot be trusted.
I'm back. Start behaving. <coughs> we have a little visitor. Come on. There's a good girl. Come on. There's a good girl. Hi. Mum and Dad are both out in the front garden and Susie's in the house by herself looking very miserable. I bought cake as well. Peter's going fabulously. Are you gonna come say hi? Sus! You have to wave to Alex even if Alex isn't here because she'll want to say she wants to see you. Come on in. Come on. Hi. You're a little lump, aren't you? You're a little lump. Can I come say hi? Cake is not for you. Can you say hello to Alex? Wave to Alex. And everybody else, of course. So I can smell cake. Where is the cake? You wanna sit down? She old lady. <laughs> She's like, I can smell the cake. Hey? Right, where did I get to with the chat? Jenny says, I did have a good time and bought lots of fabric from Joanne's and Toronto independent shops. It was mighty chilly though, I can imagine. Megan says, Evie, I agree, could not have said it better. Um, Jennifer says, take the fabric, misbehave. <laughs> you shouldn't be encouraging them, Jennifer. Uh, Rachel Lynn says, move the chair. <laughs> we should sneak in and get all the patterns. No. <laughs> Jennifer says, is there any fabric anyone wants? Now's the time to grab it. Quivering. She's properly quivering. She does that when she's happy. So he's a happy quiver. <laughs> Megan says the cat overlord away. Mice will play. <laughs> Sal says turn the sewing machine on. It's already on, Sal. Just haven't used it in the last two hours and 17 minutes more than six seams. Um, Rachel then says I'll take the thistles. They were from Lily and Mimi. Michelle says, I covered that fabric stash. It's the precious for me. <laughs> Sal says, Mich to Michelle, now is the time to take some. And Awkward Evie is smiling at Megan. Megan says, Chiana heard me. <laughs> Evie says, Susie. Jojo says, Sean, when you pop off for a drink or comfort break, you need to queue up the music from the gallery from Tony Hart or some lift music or something. So quiet. Oh, yeah. I've got it, hang on, let's see if I can find it. Um, <laughs> she's like, I can smell cake. There's a, there's a cake, where is? Oh, I don't think it's on this one, is it? I don't know if I can do it on here without ruining everything. Probably not. Um, but like the elevator music that I found, um, that I used for the sew along where I was like, this is what a revere collar actually is. Um, yeah, I should put that on, shouldn't I? <laughs> Michelle says to Sal, you're funny, I only wish. Jennifer says, hello, Susie. Trish, Trisha says, hi, Susie. Nimue says, Nimue says, what a convenient moment for my internet to be on cooperative. I'm back just in time for cute dog content. There's a happy dog face. Yeah, she's going to be 14, no, 15 later this year. I think I've got that right. Either 14 or 15. Definitely an old lady. Oh. Oh. Uh, Natty says, dang, I got um, got up to iron some some seams and Coco Cat stole my sewing chair. Now I have to scratch her butt until she gets bored and leaves. <laughs> oh, bless. Uh, Jennifer sa um, Jojo says, oh, my days, why do I keep adding two um, O's into, my, into the word um, pop? <laughs> Poop. 
I don't know if you can hear this little one. You're making a lot of noise. Is that nice? Is that nice? She's like, yes, you may adore me. Would you like to go down? Or do you want the cake? So that I'll have, I'll just have some more head scratchings, please. <laughs> I'm not giving you the cake. Cake is bad for you. It wouldn't be good. I had um, a hot chocolate the other day and I was talking to mum and I put it on the um, floor because the our living room, new living room is really big and the um, we've got two sofas in it now instead of just the one. And the coffee table's near the other sofa. So I put my hot chocolate on the floor and she went, oh, mint hot chocolate, that smells delicious and started lapping it up. It was like, no, chocolate for dogs is awful. And also you may not have, it's mine. <laughs> And she's like, no, but it tastes delicious. I'm like, no, not for Susie's. Mum had to move her cup of tea from her little side table over to another side table so I could use hers so that the dog couldn't get at it. But she was just like, no, I think it's, it's delicious. I want it. You all right? You all right? Do you want to sit in your bed? Are you going to actually sit in your bed though or are you going to cry because you're in the wrong room of the house and I'm not giving you full attention? It's all right, I got you. I got you. Let's put you in your bed. There you go. Comfy. She's like, no, nope, shall do it. <laughs> do not want. Immediately got out of it. <laughs> Mm. That's good. Better. Murder. Let's see, where did I get to? Ah, uh, Jennifer says Susie looks so comfy. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna. She's she's not gonna want to be in here for much longer because Mum's not here. She's gone to look at Mum's chair. When Mum puts her out um, to go pee in the evenings, if I'm still down here, she'll come down here and scratch on the door. I'll let her in. She'll walk around to Mum's chair and she'll be like, "No, Mum's not there. <laughs> Mum's just the one that's just let her out." She's like. And then kind of goes back to the main house. Do you want out now? You want out? Yes. She's just staring at the door now. Okay. Okay. Right. There you go. Little girl. Oh, get up. She's gone straight to the corner of the fence because she her and next door neighbour's dog do not get on. They are not friends. They shout at each other whenever they have the opportunity. And apparently when they see each other, well, not that Susie can see it anymore because she's blind as a bat, but apparently when they kind of like bump into each other when they're both being walked, they immediately recognise each other and then just scream. So yeah. Yeah. She's immediately gone to like harass the next door neighbour's dog. But it's not there because she's not barking, so that's good. Uh, Laurel says, hello, Sean, Susie and Peeps. Hi, Laurel. Rachel Lynn says, we got some bad news and told the daughter she was distressed and our dog came up and kissed her and cuddled her until she giggled. Got a love a doggy. Oh, oh, so cute. Uh, Joe, do I have that right? I think I do. Um, afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all keeping well. Very well, thank you. Elena says, who wants to cut out and iron a ton of interfacing instead of me? <laughs> I'm putting mine off as well, my Elena. <laughs> um, right, so yeah, I've, I have not been sticking to, well, I've not, I've com keto's completely gone out of the window over the last six weeks. Today's last day, starting up again tomorrow. So I am celebrating by having a piece of lemon cake. And yeah, it's going to start up again tomorrow because... I, I genuinely feel better for it. I had, um, dad bought the Warburton spins the other day and um, cause mum wanted to make canapes for people and he thought that they would work, but they didn't. She wanted pancakes and found those eventually. Um, 
So the Warburton Thins went into the freezer and I love them with toasted with um, butter and marmite on them. Oh my God. And there was six in a packet. So the last three days I've had Warburton Thins, two Warburton Thins for breakfast each morning. And about an hour and a half after eating them, I am down for the count. I am actually asleep, like just completely so so like sugar crash massive 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 crash and I have noticed it with all the stuff that I'm eating and totally having massive like crashes after eating this kind of stuff but it does taste amazing and it's definitely comfort food and I have definitely needed it the last six weeks I can't keep on with the like I can't I just can't keep on in the same step frame of mind that I am in at the moment so I'm trying to I've, I've, I've been giving myself like up until Monday, up until Monday, up until Monday to get through this thing and, and pick myself up off the floor and it's not working. Um, but tomorrow, regardless of how I'm feeling, I am going back onto keto because I felt so much more even and even energy on that than I do eating carbs because the carbs is literally like a roller coaster and that's not helping with my moods whatsoever for the last six weeks. But comfort food, it's just that it's comforting and I have wanted and needed it. So I have been eating it and that I haven't put any weight on. I haven't lost any, but I haven't put any on either. I've maintained, which is amazing because I have been eating like utter crap. Um, but I have decided that tomorrow, regardless of like my Monday new start kind of thing, bollocks to that, that just goes out of the window. But for my physical benefit, she wants back in two sex physical benefit. I am going back into eating keto because I feel so much better on it. Baby! Come on, dear. You come. Come on. Is it a good girl? Are you going to go to bed? Are you going to bed? She's like, no, I just don't want the door shut. You going to bed? Oh, good girl. She's looking at it. Good girl. She just, <laughs> she just sat down on the floor next to it. Oh, Susie, that's not the way. What she really wants is me, mum and dad in the same room and then she's very, very happy. So, yeah. Uh, jo says, well remembered. Yay, I got it right. I got it right. I do need to write myself a cheat sheet for everybody's usernames. I really do. Because Pamisi's here and I think it's Priscilla. I think it's Priscilla. I'm not sure if I have that right. It could be Pamela. I think it's Priscilla though. She's in the bed. She's in the bed and she's nesting. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Sal says, MacGyver, Richard Dean Anderson himself has held my dog K9 from Doctor Who. <gasps> Love him. Love him very much. I fluffed the bed up to make it comfortable for her and she's now digging and rooting around in it to make it actually comfortable for her. <laughs> Rachel Lynn says, it'll be interesting to see if you get your sojo back once you start eating keto. Actually, you know what? That might have something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, that's, that's, uh, maybe, I mean, like I say, it's comfort food, but it, maybe it's not like actually good, f well, I mean, I know it's, I know I feel better when I'm eating keto than I do when I'm eating all of the cake and carbs and crisps and bread. Oh, bread. Um, the only thing I haven't had is pasta. And I'm thinking maybe I should make myself macaroni and cheese for dinner tonight. As a, as a last hurrah because I love mac and cheese and I haven't had it I haven't had it for months I haven't had it since uh, September maybe I should make a mac and cheese I'm expecting mum to come looking for the dog soon because I don't know where she was she's definitely back from church because the car's back um the giant piece of cake um but yeah they, they weren't in the house so Susie was kind of like the minute I turned up she's like oh Hi, but she's now she's now asleep in her bed.
Maybe not asleep, but she's sitting in her bed. Hmm. Laurel says to Elena, I'll cut your interfacing if you do my butt five buttonholes that refuse to be sewn without scrunching up the fabric. Oh, have you tried putting some um, interfacing, some tear away interfacing on the top and the bottom? Um, my stuff's over there. Uh, but like um, embroidery interfacing as well, like tear, tear away embroidery interfacing. If I have buttonholes that, or if I'm putting buttonholes in, especially when I do my Eve dresses, what I do with my Eve dresses is put the buttonhole through the French seam so that there's a few layers of fabric um, because there's no interfacing where that buttonhole is. But I will put a layer of the embroidery interfacing underneath and then a layer of the embroidery interfacing on the top and then do the buttonhole through and then tear it away. And it works really, really well. And those are on lightweight fabrics. Um, so that might work, Laurel. Although, sorry, I'm talking Elena out of, a, of an interfacing cutter. <laughs> Evie says, my name's actually Martha. Evie is my chosen name. Um, I hadn't said anything because you try so hard to remember everyone else's names. I'm starting back on my healthy eating tomorrow as well. Would you prefer I call you Evie? Or are you happy with me calling you Evie? Or would you prefer that if I call you Martha? I don't mind. Just let me know because whichever you would prefer. Um, Nimue says, I'm going back from two to five hours of dancing after Easter. We'll be hard a few weeks, but we'll do me the world of good mentally. I'm thrown by complete uncertainty about work hours out, out of my hands. But there are so many factors that impact mental health. It can be really tricky to figure out what will help you the most. Totally agree. I've been wanting, I've been thinking about going back to salsa. Um, I kind of want to, but I also... I'm a bit hesitant about it because it's gentle exercise, but it's exercise where you are face to face with somebody else. And the way that the salsa club that I go to does it, you do you do like a minute dancing with one partner and then switch, and then you minute dancing with that new partner and switch. So everybody's hands touch everybody else, and you're breathing in everybody's face. And it just takes one person, even if they're asymptomatic. And I don't want to give it to mum and dad. Um. I mean, I've had it, it wasn't fun, but it wasn't awful, but I've had three vaccines as well. Um, but I do not want to give it to mum and dad because they are both, well, mum's not yet in her 70s, but dad's in his 70s, mum's going to be. And I do not do not want to be the one that brings it home. Um, and I know there's at least one person there that will be an anti-vaxxer. And I know he's had it. And yeah. I just, I'm a little bit wary about it. Um, Jennifer says, be right back. Need to get food. Mm, food. Elena said to Laurel, I'm in. Laurel says, I tried wash away stabilizer underneath and that didn't solve it. The shirt's in the naughty pile under my finish um, until I finish making all my Easter eggs. Um, I'll try top and bottom though. Uh, yeah, give it, a, I mean, give it a try because I found that you can kind of hold if you put, Obviously, you don't want to put any sort of tension and fight against the machine if it's doing an automatic buttonhole, but you can kind of like hold the interfacing flat as well. But again, I don't know what machine you have, and what, but yeah, try. I mean, try, try. Fingers crossed it works for you. Touch wood. Uh, Evie says, I much prefer Evie, just felt odd not mentioning it. I had to start doing joint exercising for safety. Pilates has been great. Um, oh no, that could be a little worrisome. Um, I shall keep calling you Evie then. That's totally fine. Like Nimue, Nimue's prop, proper name is Stephanie and she's coming to the retreat next month. I'm so excited to finally meet you. It's going to be two years of waiting for it. Um, but it's going to be really weird because it's like uh, Nimue has said she'll answer to both, either both um, Stephanie or Nimue. And I'm just like, I'm going to know I'm going to end up calling you Nimue for the entirety of the time that you're there. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. She's snoring. Mm. Crockett TP is here. Morning, everyone. Have I got that right? Are you Priscilla? Is Pamisi somebody else? 
I need a cheat sheet. I need to write myself a cheat sheet, don't I? Monica says, came up to my sewing room an hour ago to sew. Got stuck rearranging fabric piles while listening to you all, lol. That is perfectly acceptable, Monica. I mean, perfectly acceptable. <laughs> Michelle says, I love salsa dancing. Can't wait to get back to that. I would dance in a mask, definitely. Yeah, I would totally do that. It's just the hands that I'm worried about. But I suppose if everybody sanitizes at the beginning. She's snoring. She's actually gone to sleep. Crocker TP says, yes, Priscilla, I got it right. So Pamisi, what uh, is Pamisi Pamela then? Oh, I need to write to you. Um, Priscilla says, morning, everyone. And Evie says, thank you. Nim uh, Evie says to Nimue, Nimue is such a cool name. Nimue says, I mean, I chose this name. Would be odd if I didn't like being called it. I mean, this is true. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> Susan says, hi all, Sue from Very Wet Australia. Have been prepping pattern as I listen. It's worth getting your iron checked as it has a huge impact on um, your mental health and cognitive function. I am super, super careful about my iron levels uh, because I had severe anemia a couple of years ago. Uh, I got a case of bronchitis and then ended up ill for about six months because of super, super low blood, blood iron, um, iron levels. So I'm really careful about that. But you are right. Um, that could be a factor. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that is, is, thank you for pointing that out, Susan. That is it's a very good point. That is a very good point. <laughs> See, the, this tastes delightful going down, but I will regret it in about an hour and a half when it makes me too too. She's snoring away, it's so cute. Rachel then says, we should start the cheat sheet in the peeps group. That way you could just look it up, look it up each week. Oh, that's a good idea. We should start a cheat sheet um, pin it to the top and then people can add their user their handles Rachel and it's a brilliant idea because <laughs> we all I'm, I'm not that great at remembering names oh uh, after a few times of getting it wrong it does sort of sink in so oh, not too bad at it I need to be kind of to myself that's another thing I need to do hmm so says when I met my online gaming friends in real life some still got called their online names and some real names oh yeah that's a good point my uncle it was obviously my uncle but his online gaming name is Kampf from Pern and he gets called that a lot by his own sons as well we had guild meets my brother calls him Kampf as well I'm sure the microphone's not picking up her her um her sn snoring. But it's so cute. Chiana started snoring as well. Oh, I took a photo of Chiana this morning because I knew Alison. If Alison um was here, she was going to ask how Chiana was. This is this is what I wake up to every morning. Lily Silk's silk pillowcases are not just good for human hair, they are good for woody tap fluff as well. The minute I turn the light off, she's usually down the end of the bed whilst I'm working or watching TV. The minute I turn the light off to go to sleep, she will creep up to this, that side of the bed and curl up and, and, and rest her head on the pillow. She's so cute. So, so cute. Susie, you are snoring. Um, Vanessa said, in my last year of terrible health, I've learned that B12 deficiency destroys your energy levels and acts, acts like iron deficiency. 
That is one that I haven't tried to boost. And my uh, the lady that does my eyelashes and eyebrows does offer um, B12 injections. I was seriously considering one of those. I need a pick me up. I need something. I mean, I know, I know where this is all stemmed from, but I just have not been able to get out of a funk at all. And my my inability to get out of the funk has made it worse. <laughs> Vicious cycle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. She's properly snoring. And Nimue says, great minds. I was just going to start throwing the group for people to put down their handles and names. Awesome. Thank you. And Joe says, Google Doc. I'm not very good at those. I'll have to do something with me, but I do need a cheat sheet. <laughs> but yeah, like, and again, feel free, because I mean, um, Sal, for example, I know Stratus Strong is your online name. Sal is the name that we're allowed to call you. Is Salvador, is that correct? Salvatore? Oh, sorry, I'm getting it wrong. Again, not the, not the greatest um, head for names, but what would you prefer to be called? Like, I have always hated being called anything but Sean. And um, you can't shorten Sean, really. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. Um, but I've had a few people try and call me Shani, um, like lengthen, and I hate that. I absolutely hate it. So I definitely prefer to be called Sean. Um, like, mum always calls James James, but and um, Big Bird and the family know him as Jim. And again, he gets called Jim at work as well. And I find that so weird. It's just like, it's not, he's not a Jim, he's James. <laughs> it's like, who are you talking about? It's like, yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer says, Penelope wanted under the blankets last night. It was a very rare occurrence. Oh, oh so cute. Jojo says, if you're going to fall asleep at your desk, post cake, you can, can your bunny ears, um, post cake, can your bunny ears on first, um, put your bunny ears on first to recreate the James Martin moment. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I'd taken my, we didn't, we, we weren't allowed to take any of our costumes. I did steal my name cuff because um, the valets had like little um, rosettes on their hips with their names on it, but we couldn't because they would um, hit against the, uh, gaming tables and um, so the croupiers had our names embroidered onto our cuffs so I stole one of my cuffs and I also stole my cufflinks <laughs> I wish I'd taken a tail as well knitting it out loud probably get like yeah but our um our costume we weren't we were not to take any of our costumes out of the building <laughs> last piece of cake like a snake Unhinge my jaw. I didn't mean to wake you up, Suze. You go back to sleep. The snoring is very cute. It is. It's very cute. I've turned the iron on three times now. I will go and press the darts this time, though. The darts will get pressed. It she does. Um, Anessa says, I get a blood test first to check levels because it's not safe to just add more if your levels are high. Yeah. I wonder how, hmm. wonder how I could request a blood test. I had them before because they were convinced that I had arthritis that was the problem so they were like you need to go and have some blood tests done turns out I did not have arthritis but I did have severe anemia so I mean small mercies that was yeah um Jennifer says I hate being called Jenny Jen Ugg so much it's like nails on the chalkboard for me yeah I worked with somebody whose name was Samantha and she hadn't told anyone she preferred Samantha so a friend of like one of the other girls was like Sam um, could you pass me this in the changing rooms at work? 
And she went, it's Samantha and Sean, you should learn that too. And I was like, okay then. <laughs> wow. I clearly called her Sam by accident at some point or another. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I didn't do it on purpose. Like you didn't, I don't think you, you hadn't told me your preference was to be called Samantha. Um, so yeah, <laughs> she was not pleased. And I get it, I get it, I get it because I hate people changing my name. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't even me that said anything this time. And she was like, and Sean, you need to learn it too. Like, okay, sauce. <laughs> Uh, Gig Racer says, I hate my, my name being shortened to Manisha. Probably said that wrong, haven't I? I'm very sorry. But yeah. Anessa says, my son's name is Christoph, and it makes him really angry when people who aren't very close to him call him Chris. Yeah, that's, again, pet names are, and, uh, are something that are very important. And uh, <laughs> Alison, it's like, it's like um, I've just mentioned you, and it's like, it's like I have summoned you to, to the chat. Alison says, hello, Sean and Peeps. How are you all today? Sean, you know what I'm going to ask. How is the lovely Chiana today? Alison, I knew you were going to ask that, so I have come prepared. Lily silk pillows are not just for humans. This is how Chiana sleeps, with her head on her lily silk pillowcase. It's very good for her fluff. She's very well, thank you. How is Binks? Um... Johanna says, same with my brother. He's um, David to me, but everyone else calls him Dave. <laughs> uh, Jennifer says, Alison, you just missed the chief photo. We need to get it back. <laughs> um, Jenna Lee says, I, don't use, I didn't used to care if it was called Jen or Jenny, but since my grandmother passed away, I'm named after her and she went by Jenny. I've insisted on being called Jenny Lee. That's reasonable. That's very reasonable. Yep. Uh, Alison says, my nickname has always been Alley Cat. Oh, that's cute. Sal says, it's Salvador. You can call me Sal, Salvi, Salvador. Just don't call me Shirley. <laughs> okay. Elena says, but now you can recreate your costume. Oh, uh, what was that in reference to? Oh, my bunny costume. Yes. Yes. I've thought about that, you know, because I always wanted an emerald green one. I only had black silk. Black used to be the pinnacle of achievement. Black was the, the one that you everybody wanted to get. You started off in colours. And if you managed to work your way up to black, that was like only very special when you've got the black costume. But they changed everything up. They wanted a, uni a more standardised uniform at the club. So the valets were in red and the croupiers were in black. And then we did have different costumes for different events. Like they'd started doing some Christmas costumes and 4th of July, and um, for Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month, everyone had pink costumes. Well, the valets had pink costumes. The dealers, we just got stuck with black most of the time. Um, but, yeah, I always wanted emerald green. I wanted an emerald green money outfit. I actually have bought the um, Yaya Han pattern for it. It's not correct because it's a lace-up back, and the bunny costume had a zip-up back. But, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Jennifer says to Jenna Lee, I was in high school when Forrest Gump, Gump came out. It was a nightmare. Oh, God. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Alison says to Jennifer, thank you, Jennifer. Hopefully, Sean will show it again. It was taken for you, Alison. So, yes, because I knew I was going to get asked how she was. Caroline says, I, f I refuse to answer to Carol or Carolyn. Oh, gosh, I once introduced Caroline Gillum as Carolyn by accident, totally by accident. I didn't mean to do it. I, 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 again, it was like one of those ones where I was trying to be good and like, I've remembered everyone's names. And then it was like, oh, bugger, I got it wrong. I'm so sorry. It was Caroline Gillum. Yes. Um, Vanessa says, Sean, when my son was little, he did that to everyone, including me, if he said Chris. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jennifer says, I have dual citizenship. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Jennifer says to Alison, it's actually Jennifer. You're okay because it's a rare spelling error done in by a nurse in the UK. You've got to remember, it's Jennifer with the one N. One N. Laurel says, so many times when I tell people my name, they ask, can I call you Laurie? And you're like, no, no, you may not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
No one says in German. Uh, in German, it's usual to shorten Stephanie to Steffi. The only ones who do never, the ones only ones who never do it are my parents. But I don't mind in most contexts. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I think the reason that I got so, I objected so much to people changing my name is because so few people get it right um, to begin with. That it's like if you know how to say my name, say it. Please don't get it wrong on purpose. Um, I think that's where that all came from. Alison said to Jennifer, my name is spelt with two L's because when my dear dad went to register my birth his, in his lunch break, the only Alison he knew was June Alison, the extra actress. Oh, cool. Kathy said, I've had people put me down as Catherine. Um, nope, my birth certificate is Kathy. I was named after the nurse that helped deliver me. Oh, lovely. But yeah, dad's the same. His name is Danny and he is christened Danny. And apparently, even when Nana took them to the church to be christened, um, the vicar was like, so Daniel. And she's like, no, Danny. And he was like, so Daniel. She's like, no, Danny. So, yeah, if anyone tries to call Dad Dan or something, it's just like, oh, oh, no. And a few people have tried it. It's just like, it's Danny. It's like mum's actual name is Margaret. She's, um, I think I've told you guys this before as well, her, her, her birth certificate and everything is actually Margaret, Margaret Jane. Um, it's a family tradition. So technically I should be called Elizabeth, but I am not. God, can you imagine trying to explain to everybody that no, you're not known by your first name, you're known by your middle name. Well, Natasha, my best friend, she has seven first names. No, five first names because they couldn't decide that her parents couldn't decide they liked all of them so Natasha is actually her last first name but that's the one that she's known by but booking stuff for her her passport's fun <laughs> uh, where did I get to Jennifer says to Alison yeah I was born in the UK at Air Force Base and the nurse filled out the birth certificate so Jennifer was spell spelling error that my mother liked. So my nickname was One N Jen. <laughs> Trisha says, my brother who passed away last Wednesday, I'm so sorry for your loss, was Robert. Mum and I called him Rob. But my, my cousins called him Robbie and everyone else called him Bob. Oh, isn't it interesting how different people become different people to different people? That's a lot of different people in one sentence. Lala Palooza says, haha, Laurel, my name is actually Laurie. Now, would you prefer me call you Laurie or can I carry on with La La Palooza? Because La La Palooza is awesome. But Laurie, I'm quite happy to call you Laurie as well, if you would rather, if I remember as well. It's probably going to take me a couple of weeks to bring that one into the thing. But we can put it in the, in the, in the, in the peeps cheat sheet. <laughs> uh, Carolyn says, hello, sweet peeps. Hello. Carol says, my father's boss was called, always called me Caroline. Um, it was the era of Caroline Kennedy. And of course, I had her hair cut definitely a carol uh dipsy552 says my name is sandra um sandria no one has called me sandy but i use use it as it's easier sometimes to give people a name to pick up um to pick up an order i get a lot of sandra even when i write it out and i'm always like there is an e sandria sorry i did exactly the same thing didn't i i'm so sorry yeah Trying to trying to get my name down on cups for like deliveries and stuff like that. Like Stan. <laughs> Sandria. Have I got that right? Sandria? You're gonna be practicing that the entire time and getting wrong every time, aren't I? Sal says, I've had the same name as my dad, so even at 39 years old to my family, I'm still little Salvi. Nessa says, almost everyone says my name wrong. I just gave up last, um, last, oh gosh, am I saying your name wrong as well? But don't worry, Sean, you always get it right. Laugh my ass off. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> I was suddenly like, oh God, am I one of them? Jenny says, I've been listening with interest. I'm actually Jennifer, but everybody always spells it wrong. So I usually answer to Jenny. Oh, interesting. Another Jennifer with one N, but in a different, with lots of E's and no I's. I like it. Thank you for taking pity on me though, because <laughs> I would get it wrong. I know I would get it wrong. <laughs> Laurel says, Trisha, I'm so sorry for your loss. 
Rachel Lynn says, got to go. We'll have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining us, Rachel Lynn. It was lovely to see you. Um, Jennifer says to Trisha, I'm so sorry for your loss. Jin and Pin says, hi, I'm back from shopping. Now back to my sewing machine for the afternoon. Oh, God. Let the iron turn off again. Fourth time. Try and do it this time. Uh, Nimue says, there's also a difference between three syllable name being shortened with a Y I at the end ending or a short name being given the same ending when it's purely diminutive, different levels of respect. Yeah. I think it always just bugged me though, because if you know how to say my name correctly, just say my name correctly. Um, but yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Um, Monica says, my brother's legal name is Dave, but most people try to correct it by saying David. So you can't win, I guess. My husband is Alan. He works, his workers call him Al and I can't stand Al. It makes me gag. Oh no. <laughs> Lala Palooza says, whatever you prefer, but never lore. Or shan't do that then. Mary says, I'll chime in too. I go by Mary Ellen. Oh, sorry. Mary Ellen says, I go by Mary Ellen. My mother said there were too many plain Marys. I do use Fred when I order fast food places. It gets me fewer strange looks. <laughs> I love that. Join join with the Stan. Yes. Stan was the weirdest thing I've ever been called as a kid. It's like, I mean, I know I'm not the most attractive child, but I also don't look more like a boy, do I? But there you go. Alison says, I know this might sound weird, but my Binks has a second and third name and Binks is just beautiful. Thank you for asking. Oh, that's awesome. And no, not at all. Like Jennifer, Penelope Wiggle Wigglebottom and um, Natasha, her last cat was Eb Eblis Wilf uh, Fitzroy, Wilf uh, Wilfred Fitzroy. Um, his mother was Mrs. Fox. Um, Natasha's cats have got very strange names. Um, not that they're strange, but just, yeah, no, there's totally, totally nothing wrong with that. Trisha says, thanks to Jennifer. Susan says, my mother-in-law was Mavis Glenda, but she went by Glenda. We went and had it changed by Depot because she didn't want Mavis on her tombstone. Yeah, my um, my granny was Pamela Mifanwi. And at the funeral, they put the flowers out under, under Pamela. And it was like, who the hell is Pamela? I had no clue that uh, Granny's first name was Pamela. I always thought it was my family. But apparently it's a, f a family tradition for the girls in the family to be given a name and then called by their middle name for some reason or another. Um, but, yeah, I had no clue. And it was like, who the hell is Pamela? <laughs> okay. Um, Sal says, oh, I was meant to be called Damien, but because of the movie The Omen and about the Antichrist called Damien, it was advised by my mum's sister to not call me that. Lol. Just in case you lived up to the name. <laughs> Renee says, my mum was Carol Sue, not Caroline, not Susan. Um, Alison says, Sean, did you receive your parcel of goodies from Cloth Edit? I ordered the fabric that Gabrielle made the Wilder Gown blouse from and I'm going to copy it. I saw, I did. I showed the peeps earlier. My glorious, glorious fabrics arrived. So I got some of that one. Let me show that one. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then she also sent me samples. Oh. oh, iron. Right, let me go and iron these darts. It won't take me long. <laughs> this is the fourth time I've had the iron on to do this. So let's get it actually done. Susie is fast asleep. She didn't even flinch when I said her name then, which I suddenly realised after I said it was a really bad idea, but she didn't even flinch. She's fast asleep. I am very surprised that mum's not come down and said, where the hell's my dog though?
Right, that's better. I've sewn six starts today. Hang on, is that right? Yeah, two, four, six, six starts. Um, Jennifer says to Jenny, yay to another in the misspelling club for interesting spellings of Jennifer. Uh, Evie says, my daughter's middle name is Elizabeth. I found out after she was born from my Grammy that Elizabeth as a middle name was actually a tradition in her family. Oh, lovely. That's my middle name as well. Although I was named after my Auntie Betty and it turns out that she was always Betty, christened Betty, passport, birth certificate, Betty, not Elizabeth. So technically my name should be my family Betty. I would be a very different person. Um, actually, um, been told recently that if my name had been Mifanwi, certain people wouldn't have dated me. <laughs> I was like, well, why not? And it's like, because Mifanwi, it's like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a name. So, yeah. Uh, Carol says, my dad's name was Albert, but had always been called, but he had, but had always been called Billy. After 25 years, my mum asked him which he preferred and she had to switch names and she had to switch names she called him. Which did he prefer? I am intrigued. Renee says, I'm Renee, which doesn't have any common diminutives, thank goodness. My family sometimes call me Nene as a kid, and my big brother is basically the only one allowed to call me that now. <laughs> hey, James and I never had pet names for each other. Uh, Carol says, for his 80th birthday, the chef called to ask what name to put on the cake was, as the as the order said, Albert Billy, and was told that was correct. He was told that was correct. Oh. Uh, Evie says, my dad refused to let anyone call my brother anything other than Joshua, but he never cared, so his friends call him Josh now. Lol. Jennifer says, cats in my house have grand names because we'll never name children. Kathy says, I, yeah. Yeah. Chiana nearly had a lot of other names, but my flatmate at the time couldn't pronounce half of them, which is why she ended up with Chiana. I like Chiana, though. It's good. Uh, Kathy says, my middle name is my mother's name, um, Tieko. Back then, Asian names were very rare in the South, so I had to spell and pronounce it for everyone. Mia says, small girl type creature is called Rhiannon, Rian, Ri, Riri, Ripi, and Ripi 3PO. <laughs> Luckily, she answers to all of them. Yes. Because she is fabulous. Is she woken up yet? Is she hung over? Are you laughing at her? Have you provided her with toast? Alison says, my mother's name was Elaine, but when she was born, she had a lot of hair. So my nan sister has given her the nickname Topsy and she was called Topsy or Toppy by her family. Ah. Alison says, have you finally got an Oliso iron? No, not yet. Still climbing along with the crappy one because to be fair, it does work. So like I, I have one of those afflictions about spending money on something when I have something that does technically work so yeah uh evie says to allison i had a friend once her parents gave nicknames to all the kids that um no one outside of the family was allowed to use random but okay uh anessa says the worst part of growing up with, uh, with a weird name is when people argue with you about what it is <laughs> do they really oh wow I, yeah, I suppose a few people have told me that it should be called Sean. It's like, it's Sean. It's like, it, oh, it's Irish as well. Loads of people kept telling me my name is Irish, and it's like, nope, Welsh. There is a difference. Um, uh, Dipsy552 says, it's fine, Sean. Just think, Andrea, um, add an S. It's Andrea. Oh, thank you. It's Andrea. Uh, Sandy is fine too. My family, I'm. To my family, I'm Lemoy. Nothing to do with my first or middle name. And when I was really young, I thought that was my actual name. Wow. Where did Lemoy come from? That's really interesting. Sandria. I like that. Awesome. Thank you for telling me. Uh, Jojo says, Name, naming a child is such a huge thing. My son is William and there are so many options for him. As a child, he was Billy, but as an adult, he is known as Will. He's always been my Billy Bear, though. Oh, oh, oh so cute. Sal says, I'm Asian from... Um, as I'm Aslan from Narnia because my full name meaning is Saviour Young Lion War. Ah. 
Karen says, good morning all from Long Island, New York. I used to love my first name, but in the last couple of years, it's unfortunately been used to call out other out bad behavior in other people. Oh, yeah, actually, gosh, yes. And then there's the whole Chad thing as well, isn't there? Um, don't Google it. <sighs> if you don't know what it means, you don't need to. It doesn't matter. But yeah, Karen's and Chad's have had a, a bit of a crappy time of it recently. Joe says, as a child, I would get annoyed with um, when people shorten my name. And was as certainly to tell them my name is Joanne, not Joe. In my teens, I most definitely became a Joe. Most people do now don't know my full name. I was just thinking, oh God, I'm good. I've been calling you Joe all day. Have I got it wrong? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Karen says to Karen, I feel your pain. Evie says, my grandma um, said each got a variation of the nickname Lizzie. Hers was uh, Tante Lizzie. Oh, I always um, if I if I had been an Elizabeth, I think I would want to be called Beth. I think I that's what I would have had it shortened to. I like I like the idea of being a Beth. Beth feels right. But I'm not known by my middle name, so I don't need to worry about that. Joe says, my middle name is Elizabeth too. I was supposed to be spelt with an S, not a Z, but the registrar wrote it wrong. Ah, yes, mine's a Z. Natalie says, my middle name is Anne. And when I was young, I was offered... Uh, I was offended by Anne of Green Gables hating my spelling. Oh, with Anne with an E, yes. Carol says, Albert. Billy was about the gov was what the governess called him when he was born, as she said Albert wasn't a name for a baby. Um, he was Albert at work, but Billy to found both family and friends. Oh. Jojo says, I once dated a dude called Dean Hardware. <laughs> no joke, but please feel free to insert your own. <laughs> Diana said, um, Hello, Sean. Haven't been able to be on on in a while. Had to go to the US for a family emergency. I hope everything's okay. And oh, you're in Nevada now. My daughter was Naomi Irion. You probably saw her on the news. I haven't. No. Oh my gosh. I I, I hope everything is as okay as it can be, Diana. Anessa says, my son has a really close um, friend named Plum. They started daycare together at 18 months and it wasn't till grade one we found out that wasn't actually her name. <laughs> um, uh, Jenny says, my cat was going to be called Kimberly until the vet said that our, gir our girl cat had testicles. Our cat is now called Kim. Oh, um, Uh, Diana has um, put up a comment just to say what has happened to her um, her, her uh, daughter-in-law. I'm so sorry, Diana. I'm not going to include it on the chat um, just because it is really disturbing. I am so, so sorry. Um, I'm very, I, I yeah, uh, I can't imagine what you're going through at the moment. And I hope your son is okay. Uh, sorry. I thought you said your daughter and not knows just your daughter. I'm so sorry. I'm getting it wrong as well. I'm really, really sorry. Um, Sal says, my oldest son is somewhat named after Samuel L. Jackson. That's a good name. That's a good name. Um, Carol says, my mother was very confused when she got to school and they called her Louise. She only knew her name was Lulu. <laughs> um, Dipsy 552 says, the story I was told that was was that one of my older cousins called me Lemoy and it stuck and I'm not sure anyone really remembers it's been over 30 30 years now oh that's I like it though mum um mum's cousins who were supposed to be coming down for her party um we've we've had to postpone the party unfortunately but um mum's cousins they were both quite quite a bit older than her and um they used to call her worm and um, mum was being interviewed for boarding school. She was very young. Maybe it wasn't boarding school. Maybe it was an elementary, like, into nursery school. Um, but the um, the teacher was with her with her, her mum, the family at the time. And the teacher was like, and do you know how to spell your name? And she piped up with, yes, R-W-O-R-M. <laughs> it's in this interview to this teacher. Because the cousins, the two boy cousins, had taught her that that was the correct spelling of her name. <laughs> also, apparently, Granny was just horrified at the time. <laughs> oh, dear. 
Uh, Debbie says, my late mum was an official Betty. I really, it really wound her up when people tried to call her Elizabeth. Oh, wow. Um, historically Fashion says, my na name is Annie. Uh, Annie with one N. Lots of mispronouncing, mispronouncing happened there. Hopefully I just went for the obvious, which was Annie with only the one N. Um, yeah. People see an, an unusual spelling of, of a fairly, not I don't want to say common name, but like a well-known name. And they're like, well, this is spelt differently. It must be pronounced differently and go for, di yeah, it's like, okay. Uh, Claire says, have to go now. Lovely to catch up. Have a good weekend, everyone. You too. Thank you for joining us. Three hours, 10 minutes in, I've sewn six darts. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Never mind. Chiana, um, not Chiana, I just looked over and I've still got the photo of Chiana asleep, but Susie is still snoring. It is very cute. Teeny tiny little baby snores. Teeny tiny little baby snores. Oh, poor Riri is not up for the toast yet. Oh, bless her. Oh, I can't imagine getting that drunk anymore. Not fun, not fun, not fun at all. Sal says, apart from my dad, I've never met another real life, another in real life with the name Salvador like me. Uh, Evie says to Diana, I live in New Mexico, sending you all my support. Elena says, my son's name is Christian Aleski. He hates when we call him Chris, but he's fine when we call him Piglet. Isn't it weird how people will sort of get um, uh, and like, get offended by certain things? <laughs> Michelle says, my kids are Massimo Gerardo and Amalia Ottavia. I wanted Italian names for our family is from Salam, uh, Sal, Salerno and Naples. Naples, I can say, um, but not at the same as our, not all the same as our cousins. Debbie says, pets and children are super cute when they're snoring. Grown-ups, not so much. Totally feeling you there, Debbie. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is very cute little snoring what's going on down there. Jojo says, Diane, um, Diana, my heart is with you and thinking of you all. Um, Nia says, don't know what possessed her to drink vodka. She never drinks vodka. I had to go, oh, bless her. Yeah, no, vodka is, vodka is evil. I had vodka. That was, that was the first time I ever got properly, properly drunk. It was somebody's 16th birthday party, and one of the girls had snuck in a bottle of vodka. She had poured out a bottle of water, like a personal size bottle of water, and filled it up with vodka from her father's stash. And we had, like, one of those plastic cups of vodka each, and with no mixer, and we were just sipping it all night. Oh my god, I've never been so ill in my life. That was oh, it was appalling. It was really not good. Uh, Pamela says my daughter's name is Elisha. Hopefully, I've said that right. Evie says Sean Beth would be a lovely name. I accidentally named my daughter so that she may never outrun the nickname Mel. Her first name is Melissa, her and her initials spell Mel. My initials used to spell so. They don't anymore, but they did. They, they did used to spell so. It was like predestined. So I'll say one thing that is hard. One thing that is hard being a writer is coming up with names for characters. My name, my name character, main character name I came up with is Doctor Victoria Redgrave. It's a good name. I like it. When I used to write stories when I was a kid, I used to go through the phone book and just like open it to a random page and then pick my favourite name from the phone book. <laughs> oh, yeah. Evie says, never drink Svedka. It's a combination of vodka that's all, all of them are 80 to 100% alcohol. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the last time I had a drink, actually. Oh, I think I had a glass of wine a couple of days ago. I haven't had a drink for a while. Oh, I just found, found a stray thread in my dress. And another one. Got it. Got it. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day now, my lovelies. 
I think I am going to say six darts is good enough to do. <laughs> six darts is pathetic, isn't it? It's truly pathetic. But at least I did something. Right? <laughs> oh dear. Oh keep rolling over this dress it's such it's such a lot of fabric uh let's see jojo says actually body hangovers are never fun no anna's here hi yeah i've been here for a little bit just been busy so saying good day now hello anna it's nice to see you laurel says i learned how to drink vodka in russia from the professionals you always say a toast and have a big bite to eat after each shot <laughs> yeah it's not a sipping drink i learned that <laughs> uh monica says my kids uh, my kids' names are August, uh, Agostino, uh, Agost, uh, Agostino, and Gabriella, Gus and Gabby. Oh, cool. Uh, my grandfather's Portuguese name. Oh, I like it. Um, Diana says, what happened to your sojo? Uh, I have no idea. I wish I knew. I would go and find it. Michelle says, ta-da ta -ta for now. Mary says, toodles, thanks for the entertainment. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Alison says, Sean, before you go, did you manage to sort out um, about receiving your mail? No, I have found somewhere on the island that will possibly do it. I need to phone them tomorrow to chase up the email I sent to find out. I'm getting there. Anessa says, nah, six starts shows us you actually like to hang out with us. <laughs> Evie says, darts are better than dusty fabric from sitting untouched. This is true. Debbie says, hey, we had a nice chat and kept each other company, which for me is the main thing. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, Alison says, please give Tiana a cuddle from me. Bink says, purrs and headbutts to you all in the peeps. Thank you, Binks, and I shall do. Carol says, I have spent two hours trying to hem a t-shirt. The stripes are spiralling. Oh, no. Um, good luck with that, though, Carol. You'll get there. Gig Rosa says, thanks for the hangout and have a lovely week, peeps. And Jennifer says, thank you for the chats. Thank you very much for joining. And, um, yeah. Fingers crossed. So Joe will be back next week. We shall see. I would like to spend more than two days in here. Well, technically three today now, including today. But I would like to spend more than three days in here, two days in here next week. Um, oh, Elena says, see, see you next week on my birthday. It was your birthday next Sunday. I probably won't remember that, but I will try. <laughs> um, Sal says, good night from, from down under. Right. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for putting up with me for the last couple of weeks. I know I have not been my usual sunny self. Um, it will get back. I know it will. Everything, this too shall pass and all that. So I will get there. It will be fine. But thank you very much for bearing with me and keeping me company as well, because it is very much appreciated and definitely the highlight of my week. So I'm going to try and end the stream gracefully and I will see you all next weekend. Bye.